Hello and welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. Hello, no, and Wilkins. My name is Mark. A little Henlo. Hen, Hen, Henlos. Uh, joining us today, uh, coming back from his numerous times on, welcome to Skylar. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> I, I do so good. Oh, hello. <laughs> I do so good. Oh, round <laughs> Senpai, please. <laughs> please. So please. Uh, and joining us for the very first time is uh, Todd. How you doing, Todd? I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by the sudden emergence of all the waifus in the room. Right. I'm doing. I'm <laughs> well, it's less the waifus and more the weeboos. Uh, I, my pillow is in the other room. Ah. So. There was, uh, what was that convention that was in Calgary today? Oda uh, Alberta Classic. O- no, Oda Fest. Oh, Oda. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you can afford to go to a convention, you can afford deodorant. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. That should be like a, a requirement. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Like a right? big, broad sign. Take like, your deodorant. But not like. You, you like go past you know like you go past and they give you a stamp or they give you a bracelet at that same moment they give you a breath mint they give you a quick shampoo um just a instead of your, if you're wearing like pajama pants they'll be like please sir please put some real pants on here at the very least sweatpants come on come on, come on. Yeah. something you clearly did not sleep in last night ironic coming from warhammer players oh that's how time. you know you're bad yeah yeah yeah, if Warhammer players call you out. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Oh, Mark and I were actually just at the uh, Alberta Classic yesterday, which was the 18th. Sure. It's a little competition in Calgary. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was like a 40-player tournament. Yeah, a lot of tables, a lot of cool, a lot of night players. <laughs> yeah, like a quarter, of, it. <laughs> a quarter of them played nights. Where was that? Was that Ogre's Den? Ogre's yeah. Den. Yeah, I just checked that place out like two weeks ago. It's Blew a lot of space. Mind. Yeah, yeah not a, not really anything for product. No, you can order. You order. It's not there for product. Exactly. exactly. Places like that, you order from. You don't I go to Sentry Box. Yeah, I just go to. Who's Sentry got time Box. to wait? Not no one is the Me. answer. No. I do. <laughs> Literally every person, oh. every person other than you has the patience. <laughs> There's level no time beyond a five year old. <laughs> There's no anyone time. else That's could wait. True. Like, I, I'm i starting a new army, and I have to order basically everything online. It's like, well, I, I guess I'm not a 40k player anymore. Well, you're it's right. It's been two days. Of course. Cause I, ga- I, guess I, I guess I'm out of the hobby. Your old army isn't even done. <laughs> so here's the funny thing. We rag on Christian a lot. <laughs> right? That's not funny. Well, sure. It serious, is sad. He has serious mental illnesses. I know. I know. That we need to well, work out with we're him. We're not here to deal with those today. Today, we're here to deal with yours, Mark. This is an intervention. <laughs> because, correct me if I'm wrong, uh-huh. you, you have a Tau army? Yeah, it's done. That is incomplete? No, it's done. Oh, you've painted all your tanks. No, I burnt them. I ah, rewrote the list. So now okay. it's my 1,500 point yes. list is actually only 500 points. That's right. And, and, then, mm. and, so. and then you had a uh, obliterator army? That's fully painted. That's done? That's and fully painted. All your Rick. chaos cultists? I'm waiting for him. Oh, Fucking that's patience. Right. You don't own I don't. Them. I've ordered right. them. I'm waiting. So you said you're starting a new <laughs> army, but your two ones aren't done yet. Uh huh. No, but they're done. Sure, they're done to to your standards. <laughs> <laughs> to the patient Some level of, of a five year old. For the record, e- I can't rag on him at all. I have seven orc armies being built right now, and my <laughs> stack of shame actually comes up to my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, truthfully, I shouldn't. Truthfully, I have a lot of unpainted models <laughs> that I should deal with in my own time. But you know what they say. <laughs> Who's got the time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what they say. Anyways, uh, let's get into some thank yous before we actually continue. There, We actually have a lot of new uh, Patreons yep. today. Yep. It's because I've been slinging us out across the town, you know? You've been whoring us out, you mean? Well, sure, yeah. Uh, potato, what's potato, the potato. difference? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Anyways, we would like to say thank you to Thomas, uh, James, Jason, John, Amadeus, and Amadeus, Matthew. Amadeus, <laughs> Amadeus. Somebody so did. thank you so much, uh, guys, for your contributions, contributions to our um, show. Nonsense. To our nonsense. To our no- oh, that was... Yeah. I thought you were saying, like, nonsense. Don't thank them. <laughs> Why? No, yeah. I mean, it truly is nonsense. But thank you guys for contributing. Uh, we obviously appreciate it. Uh, the, the weirdest part is when you get those messages. It's like, oh, yeah, I just started listening to you guys a week ago. I'm 20 episodes in. It's like, oh, huh, fuck. Huh. Well, There was a guy. There was a guy. Uh, was, 
um, <sighs> there was a guy who was like, hey, like I started listening in in February. And he's like, I'm already halfway through everything again. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, you have got to have better things to do with your time than listen to this well, sultry, swill, okay. sultry voice. Coming from a fan, if we are listening to the podcast, we probably don't have anything else better to do anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've got two Fair. kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> you just sing alone in the basement, lights are off listening to the lore hammer. Just shuddering yeah. in a blanket, just... Your kids want to play with you, but you got no time for them. <laughs> they forgot no. they exist. <laughs> no, man. daddy. No time. I just enter through the garage, I sleep in the garage, and then I leave through the garage. Uh-huh. I sense Excellent. a theme here. <laughs> garage theme. Uh, but yes, thank you so much, guys. If you'd like to participate, if you want to contribute, check us out on Patreon. If, if you, you want to become a Patreon. Right. If you would like yeah. to be a Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's just there's one guy who like messaged <laughs> us and he's like I can't stand the way Eric says patron it's patron, but I think it's funny. Said so. Patreon. Yeah, we got Patreon yeah. members, not patrons. No, we yeah, have Patreon. Because I, I was just <laughs> thinking like, what the fuck are you guys saying it like that? <laughs> patrons, what the hell? You didn't want to call us out. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a polite guest. Uh, but if also you just want to chat with us or you want to see a little more of what we're about. Make uh, sure it's not dumb or we'll call you out on it on the podcast. Sure, of course. Of course. We'll post a picture of yes, you so that's everyone right. knows uh-huh. how dumb you are. <laughs> we'll, we'll put a picture of you over a dart bar and just throw <laughs> darts at it. Uh, we'll do a little voodoo if we have to. <laughs> Chicken bones, whatever. Yeah. Um, but you hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while I pop on Twitter, but yeah, really, that's just a land of Twitter. degenerates. <laughs> so, <laughs> Twitter is ugh, makes me. It's a cesspool of, of villainy and scum. Yeah, thought. pretty yeah. much scum and villainy. Scum and villain. That's yes. right. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Uh, today is all about uh, Gretchen's or sorry, Grot's snots and squigs. Perfect. So before we get in there, I would like to share a, a joke. Okay. An orc joke, <laughs> obviously. Oh my god! With all Here of we you go, guys. boys. Strap yourself in. It's going right. to be a long night. <laughs> hey, Skylar, did he say strap in or strap on? He said, definitely said strap on. Well, you guys brought yours, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Things like a horse. Hang on, hang on, hang on. But it's got Mark's name Let on me get the ready. shaft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready now. Why is yours pneumatic? <laughs> it's air powered. <laughs> it's air. inflatable? <laughs> He's sick on my neck. Uh, the orcs are entrenched in fortica- fortifications on a battlefield where they hear some shouting from the enemy trenches. One space marine is worth ten orcs! So the orcs can't let their good name be slandered. So the boss sends ten orcs to run to the enemy trenches shouting, Here we go! <laughs> After a couple of minutes, the orcs hear a voice shouting, One space marine is worth fifty orcs! So the boss sends fifty orcs charging towards the enemy trenches. Ten minutes later, a voice shouts, One space marine mm-hmm. is worth 100 orcs! So 100 orcs charge into the enemy trench on the boss's orders. Fifteen minutes later, a solitary orc returns and reports to the boss, They cheated, boss! There was two of them! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Just a little orc humor for you guys <laughs> before we... Uh... Dive, dive in. Or, the... or humor is worse than dad humor. Almost. That's right. <laughs> okay. Or it is dad humor. It's pretty much the same. Uh, but let's talk about orcs. Okay, Specifically, sit... the little orcoids. This, this will Boy. We'll cover everything under Just cut orcs. Eric off. Just What's cut up? him off. Oh, I'll just save this joke for the end of the podcast. Oh, we got a joke wanna, for the end. You want to say a joke? Yeah, but let's, let's end it on a high right. note. We can just end gonna, it on a high note. Well. save that one. Fair enough. So there you go. Everyone can anticipate now. Fast yeah. forward two hours and uh, check out the jokes and come back. The joke. Uh-huh. It'll be the best quality of the <laughs> podcast. We're hitting it up so much now. It's better be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like I better die. The, the bar that you've set is pretty low, though. First for, of all, rude. <laughs> Second of all, inconsiderate. <laughs> Third of all, uh-huh. I quit. <laughs> oh, okay. Excellent. So clearly done. correct. <laughs> Uh, so today we're talking about the lesser orcoids. Yeah. So these are the smaller orcs, and, and in fact, we're going all the way to the smallest, and also the biggest. And ooh, ooh, just a little, <laughs> a little bit of everything. For you. <laughs> just Definitely. Rub you. 
Nice nibble play, Mark. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh Very titillating. Oh Don't ever say nibble play again. <laughs> yeah, so orc words are made up of many different types of uh, orcs. Like there's orcs, there's Gretchen, there's Grots, there's Squigs, there's Snotlings. There's all these different things, and they're all orc words. Um, and the way orc words are grown is... Oh, yeah, I've made a uh, four-step um, plan for growing orcs. So uh, step one is you take one scoop of aged oak orc spore uh, and place it in a uh, dark and smelly cave is smelly essential or yes. just okay uh, but only because you probably are filling it with all like like orc spore really is like just dead orc bodies uh, yeah right so uh-huh. you're just you're tossing a bunch of decomposing bodies in into there. a That's hole gonna sting. <laughs> okay <laughs> if it isn't if it didn't used to it's it does to. now okay yeah. Okay. Uh, step two is uh, make sure there is plenty of water for your orc to grow. Mm-hmm. Like, has anyone here ever done those um, little like seahorses? <laughs> what are they called? Seahorses? Sea monkeys. Sea, sea, sea monkeys. monkeys. There you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, like sea monkeys, like just add water. <laughs> That's pretty much what we're doing here. Like, you get an orc and like just add water. Yeah. <laughs> it's you go. It's your orc. Yeah, they're they're just mushrooms at the end yeah. of things. Uh, step three is come check back on your cave every week to see if an orc society has started growing. Mm-hmm. And then step four is if it has, you will have one grand moment of satisfaction before they kill, cook, and eat you. Mm. <laughs> Cooking being optional. <laughs> yeah. So is the killing, really. Yeah, mm. <laughs> they're probably just eat they're you. They're just yeah. gonna eat you. Yeah. <laughs> it's that easy. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And that's pretty much how uh, orc works. <laughs> how orc works. That's right. <laughs> Did we need a better explanation? <laughs> I mean. So what we'll, we'll touched briefly on like actual orcs just for a quick second. Like the big, strong. These are the stereotypical orcs, you know. Big, muscular. The ones that get taught <laughs> off, apparently. It's just a little bit of nipple play. Leave them alone. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, yeah, they're the most common. That's what everyone sees. But uh, they actually have their own society and behind the cer- behind the scenes uh, orcoids doing things for them, building things, growing, things, growing things, things, brewing things, farming things, things yeah. selling things, <laughs> killing things, killing. Yeah. Lots of things for orcs <laughs> to do. So let's talk about some of them. Philosophizing things. Do they do that? Orcomedes. Orcomedes. Come on. That's an orc, though. Oh. Not a. That's lesson. just part of orc society. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, leading slave rebellions. Mm. Grotticus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just steal that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Organizing socialist revolutions. That's right. <laughs> uh, sna- Snollin. Snollin. That's right. Direct. Having an oppressive regime. How about Snittler? Snittler. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Snittler the Grot. <laughs> uh, so today we are talking specifically, though, um, about Grots or Gretchens. Yeah. Snotlings. Or Runtas, even. Or what? Runtas. Runtas. So three another, words yep. to describe. Yeah, like yeah. one is what they call themselves, one is what so they So what are. do they call themselves? I think they call themselves Gretchens. They do. Uh, and then orcs call them grots. Or rantas. Or rantas. Grots being a derogatory, diminutive term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is excellent. <laughs> you grot, Mark. You <laughs> filthy, filthy grot. <laughs> um, yeah. So these are smaller cousins to the larger orc, and they share uh, a lot of the f- same features similar physiological traits that an orc has uh they are a gangly humanoid you know weirdly proportioned they don't yeah. they're not like us which are perfect <laughs> and every except created in <laughs> except the, christian obviously. no well well he doesn't he, yeah he's uh, both somehow gangly human. and stunty at the same yeah. time <laughs> weird uh well us who are created in the image of the emperor mm-hmm. you know obviously perfect <laughs> Um, we are proportioned, and they are not. Uh, <laughs> Grots or Gretchens are on average four feet tall, which is a little crazy when you think about it. Because when you see them on tabletop, on tabletop, yeah. they look like coming up to like a guardsman's what waist? Mm-hmm. Maybe a little higher Maybe than a, that. But yeah, but a guardsman pretty... should be anywhere from like five to six feet, right? Six feet. They got real good nutrients. All of them. All Every of them. single yep. guardsman. Yeah. All the trillions of guardsmen yeah. are six feet tall. Six foot exactly. minimum one. That's yeah. like a prerequisite for being in the army. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you go to the factorum. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, or so being a legion. Around four feet tall. They do have green skin. Yeah. Pretty standard. And they can have, uh, like, they're typically, like, less green than your standard orc. But, uh, 
a little more dirty. How are you less green? <laughs> like they're not like a dark green. They're mm-hmm. more of like uh like a light green. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. uh there's uh colors and there's wheels and if you look at color <laughs> wheels they're all a thing. Green yes you can yeah it's, somewhere on there it's <laughs> less space chlorophyll because gretchens are smaller and if they had more chlorophyll they'd get bigger but because their genetics are designed to be smaller they wouldn't have as much chlorophyll as like an orc which is designed to grow and, now grow, that's, and grow that's some hardcore yeah. science that yeah, you just that tossed out sense. on that's an orc episode i'm the orc guy <laughs> i see them a little more gray like green yeah. and gray mm-hmm. For sure, not very it's healthy. Like a, it's like a diseased-looking green. <laughs> right? yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah, a weird shit. brown in there yeah. too. Like they're like mottled skin. They look unhealthy. Oh. They just look infirm. <laughs> poor little guys. Oh, um, so oh. They have a toofy mouth. Yeah, and toofy. this is actually so their toofy. most effective weapon. <laughs> you know, although but, they probably still do have like claws and nails. And yes, not of course claws, they do. but nails. nails definitely yeah. nails. But um, and lucky ones are allowed guns. Mm-hmm. Very lucky ones. <laughs> uh, they do have pointed ears, although the Gretchens are considerably larger than the standard orcs. Like, an orc might have ears, actually, that look a lot more like ours, but a Gretchens yeah. extend way past their head. They're like one of those cute little pup dogs. No. <laughs> like a fox. Please don't compare them to... <laughs> you just want to love and hold it. Little, take it home. Literally put it in your, you. Put it in your basement. Water it. All right. Check on it once a week. All right. Eat it. I'm saying that Mark Mark loses to a Gretchen in a fight. 100%. Come here, little guy. I'll take it. It's like a really angry Dobby dipped in green paint. Exactly. Oh, no. Oh, feral Dobby. <laughs> no, that's actually a good... Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Right? And yeah. he's treated about the same. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yep. Uh, grots are also characterized as having a large bulbous noses. Uh, giving them a heightened sense of smell. They have effective sight in the dark, which is something orcs don't have. Yeah. So that's an interesting trait that kind of advances them beyond the standard orcs. Making them more crafty and sneaky. Right. And they all sneak it around in the night. Yeah. And they're, so they have larger noses, better hearing, uh, and they have their larger. I'm, sorry. Larger I'm, noses, better smelling. No. Ah. Uh, um, so they also have sharper <laughs> hearing. So better hearing, <laughs> better smelling. <laughs> Uh, they can see in the dark, but they are small and weak and gangly. Okay? Uh, because, okay. Because, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> look, come on, guys. This is a learning <laughs> lesson. And God damn it, you will learn. How many, oh how many questions oh, are on the test, so there? Much. Don't worry. It's all multiple choice. It's but there much. is a bonus written portion at the very end of it. You can make up for your shitty answers. <laughs> you especially but Mark might. can't read. How is he supposed to do that? I'm allowing interpretive dances <laughs> to be submitted. Ah. Skylar's got this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's we'll so just over. go into the other room and you can show me yours. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Interpretive dance! Oh, oh I thought oh. you were getting sexual favors for me to pass an orc test. I didn't think you brought your strap on. <laughs> oh my. Oh, my Everyone else did. <laughs> you want to borrow one? <laughs> There's the multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, because of a Grot's lack of physical size and strength, they rely on their vicious low cunning to survive. So they I like that they say low gunning. It is a low <laughs> no, gunning though, right? Like hilarious. they're not they're not scheming. <laughs> they're, uh, ste- no. they're stealing. They're not good schemes. No, no. no. I don't even like more they're than one step ahead. <laughs> they're they're like they're living in the shadows and they're doing everything they can to like not be noticed by the big guy who will eat them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's their low cunning. They're, they're not like like viva la revolution. Like that's not what they're doing. Do they do they hoard wealth too maybe? They <laughs> So there Trinkets, is yes. there is like a, a merchant aspect yeah. to what a Gretchen does. So I mean, you could say conceivably that Why they would hoard work, but the the reason be crafty about the it? reason that I would say that probably doesn't happen is because as soon as an orc finds out about that, all that shit's gone because the orc is going to take it from you and probably eat the Gretchen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent or slave him. Yeah, I mean, if you had a crafty enough Gretchen, you could probably get some good use out of him before you nommed him. Yeah, <laughs> they're just good snacks. Uh, so let's talk about like the role a, a grot fits in uh, orc society. Yeah, Gretchen's uh, exist to perform the many menial tasks that the orcs don't want to do, or they just don't see the need in doing. Um, orcs, all they want to do is just crumpin' and crappin'? No. What, what is it? 
What is it? What Orcs want to do? They want to make the gubbins go good. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to go fast, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta <laughs> care. No, that's a alien hedgehog. <laughs> a blue alien hedgehog. Uh, <sighs> that's some God. orc heresy right there. <laughs> honestly, I wanted to throw up when I saw that. <laughs> yeah. That that much of a reaction. Oh, I was so honestly, it made me so uncomfortable. <laughs> To like see him when he's like meow, I was like, shut up. <laughs> I like that he's got human teeth. Oh, it's so yeah. weird. Oh, it's yeah. so weird. <laughs> well, like, they came out afterwards and said, all right, there's been enough of a backlash. We're going to restructure this. Which is good. Like, I saw yeah. some guy, he put like their version of it, and then he took the same scene and put what he thought it should be. And it was like the standard Sonic, which is literally a sphere with two stick legs. But it was done, like, in a high-def thing. Yeah. And it looked so much better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, don't make him look like a toddler wearing, like, a... Ugh. A fursuit. Thanks for listening <laughs> yeah. to Sonic yeah. Cast. It's really where, Sorry. For sure. Where we talk about Sonic sorry, the Hedgehog. This is, this is 40K. <laughs> this is 40K. Uh, so, Grotz in society, they are often bullied and mistreated by the orcs. But, irregardless, uh, <laughs> they know their place in society, um, however bleak. And they usually, for the most part, accept their fate and... A lot of times, even willingly and with a smile on their face. <laughs> well, if you're not smiling, you're going to get eaten. Well, exactly. Yeah. You better be fucking happy with your lot. Because <laughs> we can man. make it worse. I don't know, man. Like, I read the Prophets of Wa book, and every time a Gret- Gretchen got happy, the orc just ate him. Because they're not allowed to be happy. <laughs> sure. Sure. But they're not like, they're not sitting in the dive bars, like, with their other grots being like, I uh, hate my life. Mondays, am I right? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, they're just, this is the way it is for them. Yep. Right? And it's, you accept your lot in life. Yeah. Maybe, maybe happy is a wrong term to use, but they're not, they're not malcontent, <laughs> you know? Who's got the time for that? <laughs> no one. There's teeth to get. <laughs> So most grots are owned by an orc master, and this offers them some protection and stability from other orcs, but not really from their master. Sure, yeah. Oh, so they're prison bitches. <laughs> yes, a lot of them are. A lot of them really are. Gretchen right. are just going around putting their tokens in the orcs' pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his now. I'm his now. Oh, <laughs> Pulling his pocket inside. Oh, out. oh god. <laughs> That's how it works, guys. In prison, just, just jumps. Uh, I've in seen the, the movies. <laughs> That's prison culture. That's prison. <laughs> That's prison, bitch. Uh, for, for <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Politics, bitch. <laughs> uh, oh. um, so other so other grots and Gretchen. Yeah, who don't have an orc master. Well, sometimes even create their own subculture, even going as far as living in tribes with each other. Yeah. And, so th- uh, those who like avoid this like master slavery bondage. Yeah. And like when when we say subculture, like Grotz and Gretchen don't fall into blood axes, um, bad death moons, scouts, goths. They don't fall evil into sons. Those, yeah, they don't fall into those categories. They'll make their own hardy culture. worms, <laughs> alpha gettys. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Alpha Legion. Sorry, culture. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, yeah. So th- they'll come up with their own culture. I'm sure it's very deep and complicated. Many rituals or that they prefer. not at all. <laughs> they just have the. It's like they have low cutting. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no. That, uh, literally, all it is is they see orcs, right? And they're like, "Oh man, the strongest wins. Like <laughs> we're gonna be just like that." So they try and have their own like. Strongest grot contest? <laughs> it's sad, though. It's just really sad. Arm wrestling competition. They got to do it in a room without any airflow because the wind That's will right. actually... That's right. They'll just knock one of their yeah. own hands Yeah, off. exactly. <laughs> of course, they want to make it fair. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're all about being fair. Exactly. Yeah. With their low kind <laughs> of... One thing that the Gretchens do seem to actually like really enjoy... Like, they don't really enjoy like getting bossed around by orcs and stuff. But what they really do enjoy is... Uh, trading like goods and services with each other, running like uh, running around trading stuff for better, stealing things. stuff that stealing, they and then yeah. they then trade for better things. Yeah, so they're always looking to steal gubbins and sell it for uh, scrap and yeah. I like to think like because um, orcs aren't particularly intelligent. No, I like to think that there's like an orc. Uh, what, what are the ones who lose their teeth all the time? The super rich ones. Um, not bad. Evil sons. I believe. No, Evil Suns go fast. Isn't it Bad Moons? Oh, maybe. Oh, it is Bad Moons. All right, yeah. so Bad Moons. I knew it was a planet type. Yeah. Some yeah. Sort of- bad Moons. There's a, a Bad Moon orc, obviously, who's rich because he loses his t- 
teeth all the time. Yeah. But he's got something. And so he really likes it. So a Gretchen steals it. Yeah. And then brings it to him. And he's like, I'll sell this to you. And the guy's <laughs> like, I love it. Now I'm going to have two of them. Yeah. And then he's <laughs> give it to me. So he puts it away. And then the guy steals it again. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'll sell this one to you. Now I'm going to have three of them. And this is how I view the low cunning uh-huh. of a Gretchen. Uh-huh. This is which, all they aspire which is to. extreme intelligence compared to an orc. Absolutely, uh-huh. yes. <laughs> Plot twist. The Gretchen is a deaf skull, and so he's just stealing everything. Oh my god. <laughs> and if he really wants to take out the orc, he'll steal something precious to one orc and plant it on another orc. Blame it on the others. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hey, I don't that's know a good if idea. this is in here. I don't think it is, but there's got to be one of these guys manipulating, like the real orcs up at the top somewhere. I, is, is there I'm any? I'm fairly lore? certain I've heard a story. Yeah, I thought I had that. too. That, I thought you guys had actually talked about a story earlier about that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. There's, like, I, I know there are a couple like Grot revolutions yeah. uh, that have happened in Grot empires and stuff. Yeah, um, they're pretty few and far between. But it, it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really awesome when they do happen. It's hilarious. But yeah, I, I could see it happening very rarely, but it could happen. Sure, that an, a war boss has a grot on his shoulder just whispering his, in his ears, running the whole show. Maybe the war boss actually is totally stupid. And the Got grot, hit in the head one too many times. Yeah, and the yeah. grot just tells him everything to do. <laughs> it's like uh, there's like a nose ring in there, and he's got two yeah. <laughs> little pieces of like s- sinew or whatever, and the grot's on top it. just pulling him, yeah. like pointing him in different directions. Plot yeah. twist that war boss has been dead 10 years, and the orc like, yeah. Yeah. just all over the grot like, right inside his yeah. skin, like moving him. Yeah, it's like four columns in trench. Yeah, and that's like the weekend at whatever. Burn, we can agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cross yeah. weekend at Bernie. <laughs> weekend at Gasgulls. <laughs> <laughs> weekend at Armageddon. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs> but yeah, like uh Orcs they have like an they they have a whole economy and stuff. So Gretchen will also be in charge of like running shops and stuff and like they actually have bars and you know mm-hmm. places to go eat. Do not race you gotta get drunk. Yeah, but- they have like this whole system that Makes no sense, but <laughs> it works for them. So, and they're usually in charge of making sure that kind of whole system works because the orcs just can't be bothered to do it. Yeah, yeah. they want to benefit from it, but they don't want to put any other work yeah. in. Well, it's like Spartan culture at that point. Like Sp- Spartan culture? Yeah. Oh, because like, they, they have yeah, like, like a metric ton of slaves, and then all they do oh, is sorry. train helots. We don't call them slaves. <laughs> we just call them helots. What about this podcast has made it seem like I am culturally sensitive? Oh, <laughs> helots. We don't like that word. <laughs> uh, so the versatility of the grot uh, has <laughs> the, versa- the versatility of the grot. Well, you can use them so many ways. <laughs> you can use them so many Again, ways. Again, helots, uh-huh. not slaves. <laughs> But they're very versatile. <laughs> it's led them to filling uh, many niches, all the way from ammunition holders to minefield clearer. You literally can guess how that one works <laughs> out for the cross. <laughs> when they tell you to sweep a minefield, they literally hand yeah. you through. I like to think that. Okay, boss. The orcs literally just grab grots and start <laughs> throwing them, them on the field. Yeah, and they're like, they'll run back to us and they'll clear the minefield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even uh, just like. Ripping out a tooth and throwing that, and then ten grots try to run. Away. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's a good one. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a really um, good. and they can go all the way from being a mindful killer to a snack. Yeah, for an orc. Yeah. So there's a lot of different places that they can reside in yeah. orc society. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of cool ones too. Like you, you see them like. Uh, on battle wagons, mounting turrets or whatever. Yeah, you'll see them sitting on top of an orc's rocket launcher, holding like the grenade to put in it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just waiting, just chilling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's actually I love seeing like a big orc vehicle with just grots crawling all over. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah. very orky. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they they do a bunch of things. You could come up with a thousand different they, things. They do do a bunch of things, but they aren't particularly battle hungry. No, they're cowardly. Yes. Unless... So so they really only feel comfortable fighting when their opponent is clearly much weaker than them. <laughs> so never. Right. Because they're no, a grot. Kill a can. A baby. Kill a cans, yeah. But yeah. then they're strong. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. A Standard grot template. A grot wants Yeah, they're, they're not bloodthirsty. Yeah. Yeah. Right? An orc is like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to punch you whether you're two feet tall or 50 feet tall. Preferably 50. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I want you yeah. bigger, better, and... <laughs> but uh the orcs do, or the gretchen do get more brave 
in number. So yes. if you get a bunch of them, they feel confident enough to swarm you. Mm. And that's normally enough. Even space marines will be brought down by swarms uh, of grots. How many swarms? If it takes, a thousand? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If it takes 2, 50, that depends. 50 are we orcs to lore? kill one space marine. Are we talking lore or tabletop? Both. Then tabletop? One-to-one one ratio. Yeah. One-to-one. Space <laughs> marines are horrible this edition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I had 18 grots on the field one time, and I killed a Talos from the Drakari. That was satisfying. <laughs> that would be, yeah. Any kill with a grot is satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> we saw a, a Tau drone. Because literally it's a- holding, like, a knife that looks like it's been, like, chipped out of stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we do have here on rare occasion- occasions, uh, Gretchen have rebelled or fled from their orc masters, and they have even set up their own empires without orcs. Yeah. So even though I, I said way earlier, like they're not leading revolutions or whatever, it's not normally, but it has it's very happened, rare, and they're they're hilarious stories, <laughs> and they're totally <laughs> worth checking out. Yeah. Um. Uh. The oldest grot is nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> They don't last long. This known grot. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, his fate is not died in glorious combat, <laughs> not aged out. You know, he was sat on. And, oh no! Yeah, That's how he died. By his war boss. Yeah, the no. war boss sat on him and killed him. So it's a glorious life to be a grot. But you know, is it a glorious life? It's no different than my life. You know, just. <laughs> fucking lurking in the shadows trying to steal as much as i can wire from the walls copper wires <laughs> hey man it pays off anything to make ends meet you know um, turning tricks on the corner turning tricks <laughs> yeah <laughs> anything to make it ends me. meet eric <laughs> uh so that's pretty much gretchen um they're, they're so cool yeah like go look at pictures of them because you can find them just scattered throughout the entire orc range just doing various yeah various things uh some are lugging around like toolboxes some are using tools like a wrench as a weapon like they're just doing whatever they're gonna do and uh yeah they got some pretty unique models oh and you can also find a lot of them on other models too you'll find them on like uh hq models have them like trailing behind them or whatever so they're constantly attached to vehicles yeah if you check out one of the storm boy models they actually have a grot inside the jetpack of one of the boys, <laughs> and all you see is just their face and the hands out of the model just, <laughs> that's awesome. so satisfying that that jetpack's like operated by like pedal power so mm-hmm. the garage is like pedaling a pedal bike <laughs> to get it to he thrust gets minus one to movement <laughs> they're also like the easiest on tabletop to like kit bash into literally anything <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah Strap them to rockets on bombs. It's great. <laughs> That's one of the best things about orcs, though, is just the craziness that you're allowed to do mm-hmm. when modeling. Yep. Like you can you can put like a, a guardsman like right next to a space marine, and you're like, well, okay, sure. Like if you want, definitely can't put a guardsman riding a space marine. You definitely could not <laughs> definitely do that. Not. No sir. The space marine would punch it, the guardsman in the heart. <laughs> in the heart. In the heart. <laughs> Maybe a salamander, and then it would die. <laughs> Um, <laughs> have, space marine? Have you, do you know uh, Ryu Art? He makes like these really quick like four panel comics. He's on Instagram a lot. Anyways, he makes this one where it's uh, a salamander talking to a guardsman, and the salamander is like, and there's flames in the background. Should I prepare myself to laugh at this? Is no, this a funny it's one? sad. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so the salamander tells the guardsman like, "We care a lot about the people that we serve," and then the next phrase like the guardsman's eyes get like a little bigger and he's like for you know we're from their community we protect their community and, and they give back to us and the guardsman eyes get a little bigger and you see like a little chat bubble in the back just going ah and then it's like sort like all we do is like we protect and, and we save and and we make sure that humanity can go on and then in the last frame He's the, asking the guardsman, like, is everything okay? And there's just burning bodies, human bodies, <laughs> everywhere around him. And the salamander is holding this it's big heavy flamer. <laughs> he's talking about all he wants to do is protect and save, and he's just burning everyone. Oh, my God. It's good. It's Get the good. heavy flamer, brother. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's just a little Thank salamander you, humor for so you So it was a joke. I guess it was. <laughs> I guess it was. We got jokes. <laughs> we got jokes. As far as sal- as far as space marines go, salamanders are jokes, anyways. Wow, Ooh, they're also my favorite chapter. Balls? They are my favorite <laughs> chapter. Are they? Yes, actually. That's cool. 
Falcon's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, okay, among loyalists, he's probably the best Primarch. There's no good Space Marines or Primarchs. Sorry, um, <laughs> what? There is not a single good Space Marine chapter or Primarch. That's all bullshit. <clears throat> Have you met a dear friend of mine named Engron? Best story ever. All bullshit. Awesome. He was awesome. He Okay. He's right. <laughs> there we go. I got Skyler to agree with me. Right. <laughs> Wait, who's right? Mark's right? <laughs> Mark's right. You can't just agree with Mark because he is looking at you with those doughy eyes. Please, Skylar, give me <laughs> that what I need. Mean? They, they worship a false god. Oh my god! Hey, at this at least point, the I'm chaos pretty sure Marines <laughs> worship real gods. Ah, yes. <laughs> hey, so man. you weren't agreeing on me because of my point. You're just a heretic. No, no. Your How does that make right? you They're feel that bullshit. the heretic is agreeing? <laughs> Makes me you. feel like a heretic. That's right. <laughs> does it feel good, Mark? No, no. I'd rather be a Zeno's player. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is the logical <laughs> conclusion. Everyone starts with the Imperium because they're like, "Wow, we want to be the good guys," <laughs> and then they realize, like, "Wait, there's a, a joke." <laughs> yeah, that's well, exactly. <laughs> they realize at some point that, wait, they're not. Good. Are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so they go to chaos, and then they're like, as they're standing in the blood of their enemies, and you know, their own body is cut open in, in ritual sacrifice. They're like, I don't like this. So then they join the Xenos. Because it's, it's the most clear and pure ideas oh. in the galaxy. Literally they're, nobody in my friend group started with Imperium. Oh, your poor... Well, actually, they chose correctly then. Yeah. Or, yeah. or Chaos, for that matter. We're all Xenos players. You transcended. That's a good group. You transcended. Just off the hop. Yeah. Good call. It good was call. a very good call. I mean, personally, I like Xenos. Um, but only because I'm used to a lot of Imperium. But mm -hmm. in our group right now, there's not a lot of Imperium. No, not really. No, if, no, we're pretty, if, pretty decent. No, it's 50-50, which it? is pretty good. Oh, that's right. Colin, James, Nathan. 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 Me, really, me and, me and you are the only Xenos player. <laughs> so now that I think about it. Well, that flip yeah. turned real fast. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got some other people in the group, too, if you really added them up. Like... <laughs> If you really included Christian in such a uh, night, no, no, you can't include Christian. <laughs> you have to yeah. play. <laughs> you have to have an army. I have played one game with him, though. Did he use his army? He, no. <laughs> he used one of yours. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 40K podcast yeah. about grot, snots, and squigs, gentlemen. Let's talk about some snots or snotlings. <laughs> uh, snotlings are very much the same as Gretchen, um, just much smaller, and they lack, lack the cunning of a grot. So. so they've got the big ears, they got the big nose, yeah. they got it, the weird, gangly, disproportionate <laughs> body. Yeah, long ears, yeah. yeah. Um, although they appear more pudgy and soft with little muscle definition. They got nice guts on them. They actually like look almost like Nurgle things. Yes, They like kind of remind me yeah. of that. Without all the rotting, yes, obviously. But, but they share like a similar shape. Yeah. Too. Yeah, uh, they can be as high as half a meter tall and are commonly seen wielding a stick or a mushroom. So when you think about it, it's only like one and a half feet. Uh, sorry, 50 centimeters <laughs> for all you. Okay. Well, it's actually quick math. Wow. Quick, quick math. No, it's just half a meter. <laughs> Did you pre-prepare pre that measurement? <laughs> Pre-prepare? <laughs> Pre-prepare. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> um, but they're tiny. Yeah. They're very, very, very small. Like yeah. a human, you're just going to step on them. Yeah. The size of a big dog. Ooh. Mm. A medium-sized dog? Foot and a half? That's basically my one-year-old. The size of a one-year-old. If you ever yeah. needed to know if you could beat a grot, uh -huh. think about if you could beat up a one-year-old. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the role of snotlings, uh, because of their diminutive size, they occupy even the, the lowest rung on the ladder of orc culture. Even Gretchen abused snotlings. So well, That's saying something. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta pay it forward. <laughs> yeah. That's all orc society is about. <laughs> yeah, giving it, back. Yeah, exactly. Paying They're just paying forward. it forward. Interesting. <laughs> all the way down the line. You think if there was like a war boss that was all about like positive reinforcement <laughs> and like recognition and reward, like it, that would 100% pay it forward? 100% it would. <laughs> It'd be hilarious, but yeah. So the most giving orc society <laughs> ever. <laughs> You have some teeth. Punches himself in the yeah. face. Yeah. As most. I'll give you some teeth. Yeah. 
<laughs> they like like pet and cuddle their food squeak yes, before they course. eat them. They like, apologize. <laughs> so, I'm really sorry like, about this. Thank you for this. Your sacrifice. lifeblood will live on in me. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all vegetarians. <laughs> But, but they're, they're all fungi. fungi. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They'd have to be carnivores <laughs> so that they didn't eat anything of the orc species. <laughs> they're cannibals. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so Snotlings do, however, hold an important role in keeping orc society from falling apart. And that's to grow and cultivate new fungus, uh, whether that is a food source or new orcoids themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So if like whatever like the growing fields are that orcs actually come from snotlings are responsible for those so they're they're actually one of the most important things it's one of those things where it's like no one gives a shit they're small they're underfoot you don't care but if you didn't have them you'd notice it you'd have to eat a lot more gretchen i guess <laughs> but i how don't you, see a problem how with would this. you get that if there's no one to grow your fungus it, it just expedites the process they're gonna grow anyways <laughs> no no they just won't. Eric told us we have to put them in a you smelly have to cave. Put them in the cave. <laughs> Those four steps that have to be done. You and need not to ones. grow, right? <laughs> <laughs> just to have this image of this fat little Gretchen or like a little snotling just going in one of those straw weaved hats with a little mini hoe. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but it's a mushroom. Me. It's a mushroom and he's like dragging it in the <laughs> That's exactly what I see too. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> he's got like a, a pair of coveralls, but one of the straps <laughs> is undone. So it's like folded over and you can see his gross nip. <laughs> they have nips. They, don't have they do have nips. They do not have in nipples. In my mind they do. <laughs> they do not have nipples. Nipples are mammals. <laughs> I'll show you an orc, and I bet you I can find one that has nipples. You're, you're on. I bet you I can find a 40k, like a Games Workshop drawing of an orc that has nipples. Well, somebody in Games Workshop's just sick, then. <laughs> Do we want to put money on this? I already know the picture you're going to look up. <laughs> oh, God. Should we be scared? No, that's a good picture. Uh, keep going, Mark. I want to find this. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, th- there's really not much else to say about snotlings. Um, they, they live the simplest of lives of all sentient creatures in the galaxy. There's, there's nothing to them. So, let's talk about squigs. Squigs are pretty crazy because uh, they come in uh, uh-oh. the Blood Bowl <laughs> one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are some big old titties. <laughs> Blood Bowl <laughs> or cheerleader. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, pass it around. Horrible. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Mark, that's weird. That's you not shouldn't... nipple piercings, though. That's just skin piercings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, oh, my. Squigs. squigs. It's, very, it's very easy to laugh at what we're laughing at. Just Google orc nipples. You'll find it quick enough. You'll find photo it. Photo down. <laughs> nipples. Saving that Ooh. for the... <laughs> so, squigs. We get squigs, it? yes. Um, often called squiggly beasts. Squigs are pretty crazy because squigs is like a catch-all term. There are many different types of squigs, and we're yeah. going to get into them. There's not like a, a clear, defining physical trait that makes a squig. I think I to me the defining physical or the yeah physical. You're right, but the defining trait, the defining difference between like is a, a beast. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it is sentience essentially. Yeah, they are nothing more than beasts. Yeah. they don't have any kind of higher brain power beyond their instinctual yeah. drives. Yeah, exactly. and that's what's different because there are squigs that are can fit in your hand. And there are squigs that are bigger than you. So yeah. there's no, and they all look different and they all have different traits about them. So there's yeah. no, there's no defining treat that way. So. Uh, interesting thing too about squigs too is uh, they'll actually, they actually have different colors where all orcoids, orcs or Gretchen or Snarlings, they're all green, but squigs, you'll have red ones, you'll have black ones, you'll have all types of different colors. Um, sometimes the more colorful they are, the more poisonous they would be kind of like a snake. Hmm. Um, <laughs> What? Like a sneaky little like snake. Like a sneaky little snake. A sneaky little a squiggly slipper, beast. Slippery, sneaky little snake. <laughs> what is the point of having a poisonous squig? Oh, there's there's lots of points. What would you use it for? Shock attack gun. <laughs> there you yeah, go. but what? Is it opening itself on the victim and forcing so, the victim to eat it? <laughs> there, there are some guns that shoot, shoot squigs or grots or Gretchen. Sure. 
and then the force of the impact will explode it. I really see. Releasing acid or that poison. That makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. So it shoots was, it and it just splat. Imagine throwing an orange at a wall. No, I'm more, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Let's go tomato. Actually, doesn't I, have that peel on. Yeah, it. Lots, lots in, lots softer. in my lots brain, softer. In, in my brain, it was like they're shooting these squigs and they're just landing on the thing and then just like biting it, <laughs> and just, like scratching it. That also happens. Yes, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are lava squid squigs. <laughs> uh, uh, so squigs feed on the refuse of larger orcs. So they're poop. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. They eat poop. <laughs> <sighs> How do they poop if they don't have buttholes? How do you know they don't have buttholes? Because I All researched right. orcs. Go on the Google. Show I, orc I would be interested to, to see something that says orcs don't have buttholes. Okay. I will find it, and then I will tell you. It has to be referenced, though. It can't just be some guy's Reddit post. And it can't be a first edition. Yes, that's Deal. way too early. But I'll tell you right now, they excrete waste through their skin and not through their buttholes. They're completely Kendall down there. So, it, like, is it porous? <laughs> like, they sweat it out? Yeah. So how can an orc eat that? I think by refuse, they just mean whatever the orcs leave or don't yeah. eat. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's going to clump up and fall I could off. be that. Like, that's it. Yeah. 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 But, they, but they also, yeah. Because I had this thought, too, when I was reading it earlier as well. Like, I, I don't think it's actual. I think they just say it was crap. If it was crap, yeah. they wouldn't say refuse. <laughs> I'm sure like there's uh, leftovers too. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm sure there's like sucker They're squids, garbage. like those sucker fish on the side of tanks. Yeah, just like sucker squids on orcs. <laughs> <just like, laughs> oh, <laughs> that's gross. how they do it. <laughs> Finding the imaginary orc nipple and just. That's what nipples are. They're just squigs, guys. <laughs> they're just the squigs, <laughs> exactly, and they're just feeding. That's, they're big pectoral muscles. Are accumulative a lot of they make a lot of refuse. Yeah. So oh. that's what they the get big. Just suck off. Yeah, they right? have a little burrowing tongue that just God. pierces the skin and sucks it out. It's like that supernatural uh, and like monster that would just feed on people. <laughs> Anyways, it's called uh, a okay. vampire. <laughs> yeah. No, it was different. Um, so they eat the sweaty <laughs> waste of an orc. <laughs> but they'll eat anything they eat yeah. plants they eat animals they'll even eat each other i'm sure they even eat metal like anything. Uh, at the very least they're gonna try they're gonna try yeah, yeah. especially the toothy and ones. no one's gonna stop them you can't <laughs> stop them um but in turn they are also the orcs primary food yeah um as i mean other than like the fungus that orcs will consume for energies <laughs> Energies. Yeah, they well, are the primary like thing can, for sure. You can eat like one thing of fungus for one energy. <laughs> oh, it's a one to one ratio. Uh, I don't think it works that way. But if you <laughs> eat one squig, you get two energy. So one. Oh, interesting. That's so, right. and how many squigs can you stack into one square storage space? Sixty four. Sixty four. Natural. Come on, we all know that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so let's talk about the different types of squigs. Um, yes. We'll, we'll start with uh, the attack squig. Um, it, it's kind of your basic squig. This one kind of is a standard shape. It has a two, ball. It's a ball with two stubby little legs and a mouth that takes up and a little not, tail. A little tail. A little tail. <laughs> Just for balance. Yeah, of course. And a mouth that takes up seventy-five percent of it. And a you know, it has two eyes. It has a nose. It has ears. It's got some Ooh. like spiny uh, hair almost coming out the back of it. Like um, a crest. Yeah. Exactly. Um, scale, sure. But yeah, these are the most common, and they're just used for, like, in battle. They're they're an attack dog, essentially. They're a uh, war boss. Got them on, like, a little leash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Roo, 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 roo. Yeah, they'll just hang out, and, you know, the, the war boss will sick them on his opponents. <laughs> um, they'll, they'll even, I'm sure, herd, like, herds of squigs. What would you call multiple squigs? A herd of Pac-Man. <laughs> that's yeah. what they look yeah, like they basically Pac-Man. Look like Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly just not just not Swish. yellow but yeah like they'll, they'll no. use them They're squig the is the singular yeah squig oh you're saying like you call like a, a murder a, of crows right right <laughs> that's exactly what i was gonna say get out of my brain a murder of squig <laughs> what do you call a cool. group of squig I think murder is probably the no, best. Herd. No, no, no. It's got to be a herd. A herd, I yeah. Because they're animal, yeah. Like runt herds and yeah. yeah. They use herd okay. a lot in orc terminology. Okay. I don't like it though. It's not dumb enough. Okay, it's a murder. Oh, murder's <laughs> too smart. That's way too cool. Yeah, way too cool. You're right. 
It's got to be like a gaggle. <laughs> a gaggle you got a of gaggle squigs. of squids. That's a good gaggle of squids you got there. How many Not teeth the gaggle. you want for? How about, how about a gargoyle? <laughs> a gargoyle. It's a bunch that's of them, really and they're all close together. A squad. A squad. Yeah. yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, that's, good, that's not bad. Yeah. They are also known to assemble in big herds. So would that would it be? Well, right? that, yeah, that, obviously it's a herd, but we didn't want to use that mark. Sorry, Damn I just it. my bad, my bad. So that that's kind of a tax squig. So just like Skyler said, pack men with legs, and yeah, they just chomp on Big things. Big angry mouth. I yeah. actually got that from Todd. He showed it to me. Oh, Todd. So I just Toddly. That in there. You guys were talking. I didn't <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to interrupt. interrupt flow, you right? just interrupt. It's all good. It's just good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like even the attack squids, there's all different types. Like. Sure. It's just there's like a form that works, and everyone grows that form. Yeah, yeah. but obviously there's, you can make other ones if you want. So but. that's the only time I'm going to say that. There's all different types of uh, of each. And one all of are these welcome. Types. Yes, because as they're long very as they can bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting uh, into some snake bite knowledge here right now. <laughs> uh, the next one we'll talk about is bag squigs, <laughs> and uh, so just like the attack squig, it has a large mouth. And a, and a round body. Right, and a round body. Mm -hmm. Except <laughs> that this one is not made for biting. It's actually just made for opening and closing this mouth. <laughs> because when it's open, thing. you can put things inside of it. And when it's closed, it keeps them inside. Yeah. And, here, and what's funny, too, about these, it's not like they kill them and turn these ones into belts. No, they're alive. They're alive, they're alive yeah. 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 It's a horrible existence. Why, why would you need to kill it? No, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so the squig will survive by slowly digesting even the most unappetite appetizing food inside yeah. or anything Excellent. really so you like so store like, like ammunition <laughs> there you go. i hope you don't <laughs> it's just adding it's like just corroding it <laughs> on your side <laughs> well they must use these as bombs somehow at maybe some point. what they that's the bomb tape. squid yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> they it's, just shove yeah. grenades in a squid and, <laughs> and throw, throw it yeah. eventually the acid will break down yeah, the bomb and it'll explode yeah. <laughs> guys we've come full circle on prison culture this is the flesh pocket <laughs> 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 oh, no. So many teeth. Oh, so uncomfortable. Oh. Wasn't there a movie about that? Oh, oh god. Oh. This is the line in uh, Deadpool 2 when they're in the prison and he's trying to pull out his knife and Deadpool's like, I can hear you rummaging around in there. I can hear you rummaging around. One of the only good parts of that movie. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about bile squigs. Let's talk about the damn bile squig. <laughs> bile squigs uh, come in once again all shapes and sizes, and uh, they're uh, they're known for being able to you know spit, vomit, spray, spray. Uh, any type squirt. of squirt, oh, oh God. squeeze, <laughs> splurt. <laughs> Ejaculate. Ejaculate. Yeah. No, there's nothing sexual about this. Hey, ejaculate just means to propel from the body fluid. All right? No so. way. It's got to mean from a sexual. He's Googling it. He needs well, to, it has to be you sexual. Spray well, while you're ejaculate. Googling that, ejaculate is the ejection of semen from the body at the moment of sexual climax. Don't try Who's to bring to your say bullshit. Who's it's semen, Eric? It's not. It's bile. Have you tasted it? <laughs> Do you know? Oh. <laughs> I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't. <laughs> so damn it, I might as well. <laughs> but bile squigs, using a, a variety of methods, <laughs> they will excrete their liquids upon the enemy. See, that just yeah. sounds sexual. No! <laughs> they're, they're Anyone also can leak? <laughs> okay. You should probably see a doc about that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that also uses lubricants. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, you, well, <laughs> when you need to, like your 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 truck isn't working, so yeah. you just get one and you ring it out over the bar bearing and uh -huh, yeah. ball bearing. Just, bar bearing. <laughs> no, you're not doing that action. Ring it out over the shaft yeah, of the piston. Like, of the like, piston. Like you're ringing a chicken like a chicken's neck. <laughs> That's how you do it. You're choking like a chicken, yes. Do they specify any shades or colors that said liquid is? Because that could really clear this whole thing up for us. All right, so depends on the squig, of the course. The cool thing about bile squigs is how they actually get to the enemy. 
So they're loaded in guns. <laughs> and they're yeah. shot at the enemy. Big, big <laughs> launchers that have squigs. Potato cannons. Potato cannons. Yeah, yeah, squigs, yeah. <laughs> Which is a pretty cool way. Well, maybe not cool, but it's a very orky way yeah. to get to an enemy. <laughs> I think that's good on bile squigs. I just want to, I just want to clarify. Yeah. They don't necessarily only have acid in them. Oh, poison. Oil. Oil, yep. Flammable fluids. So yep. it's really, the, I guess what makes it a bile squig is the fact that it has an ability to get this liquid that's inside of it outside of its body. <laughs> what a skill. <laughs> yeah, hey, that sounds pretty impressive to me. I don't know. Yeah. Biological warfare. <laughs> I love it. Next up, we got bitey squigs. Uh, so we're normally a pac-man squig body you know 70 percent of it is mouth these ones the whole thing's basically a mouth which is <laughs> like, weird like when pac-man dies and it goes like <laughs> all, <laughs> all the way <laughs> yeah it, they do that too and then they can close it so they're, they're basically all mouth and uh they'll just be launched at the enemy through potato cannon use once again so and tell then, me about bitey squig competitions uh, that's something different. Oh. Yeah. These ones are used in attack. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. They're basically just latch onto something and just chew it until either they are dead or they uh, chew through whatever. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a comic. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Pac-Man. Oh, no. He's literally <laughs> inverting on himself. <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're just lash onto an enemy and just, like, clamp oh, down and... Nom, 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 nom. I guess just more specialized than an attack squig. I, I think Do they it's, have legs because these yeah, things are yeah. also launched yeah. by rockets. Yeah, they have legs. I think it just is these ones are more aggressive and less playful as the other ones we're talking sure. about. Sure, sure. Maybe attack squigs, like because we said attack dogs, you yeah. know, they can be trained. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starved a little bit. Right, of course. Kept mean, kept hungry, yeah. but also rewarded <laughs> for good behavior. <laughs> Of but more like beaten, yeah, <laughs> for bad behavior. There we go. Uh, boom squigs are up next. Um, these squigs are infamous for their defense mechanism. They're infamous. Infamous, yeah, sure. Wow, because it's really a bad thing. Homicided that joke. Infamous. There we go. Infamous. Whatever. Infamous. I no, infamous, infamous is not. You can't say it like that. I do though. I just did. Yeah. Infamous. Who's, who, who's, who's gonna fucking stop me? Me. God damn it, Mark. We're cutting. If that. you can say, we're <laughs> cutting that. If you can say, a, irregardless, I can say, infamous. Wow. I was using it ironically, and I was using I was using it intelligently. It ironically. <laughs> Ira well, the defense I mechanism, Eric. <laughs> I'm just saying, irregardless of this, <laughs> we're getting off topic. <laughs> Their defense mis mechanism is that they uh, violently explode. At the slightest <laughs> of provocations, okay? <laughs> Literally anything will... You're just like... Direct contact, right. loud noises... Eye contact, contact, yes. eye contact. A slight touch of the knee, <laughs> as Skylar just did to me. Thank you so much you're, for that. You're so welcome. I feel at home now. They, uh, de oh! <laughs> they, they detonate with now. such force that they will actually be able to kill and maim things that are close to them. I guess just... They send fragments. They're kamikazes. Yeah, fragments of bones shooting out. Like, oh my god! No, know. they swallow pellets. <laughs> they just yeah. eat rocks all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And metal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna blow up yet? Your, your so muscle. these creatures make the perfect living ammunition for orcs and are sometimes used as landmines. That's cool. They're also <laughs> a favored practical joke uh, used by the orcs. Um, nothing amuses a speed freak more than hiding a boom squig under the seat of a of a truck. So that's fun. It's the funny thing is that it's not really a problem because they'll just slap a new pair of legs on that guy, <laughs> or just leave him in the chair. Sure, he's got a battle wagon. There. He yeah. doesn't really need legs. That's true. Well, there's no gas pedal. It's the big red button. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there's only one speed. The engine's and on it's and it's going, <laughs> or it's off and it's not. And, and then you got to wonder, what are you doing with your life? If right. If why are going? you in a truck if it's not going anywhere? <laughs> that's right. Okay, you said they were used as landmines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so orcs like normally fight other orcs because they're the closest thing so you're saying one orc group would just landmine an entire field with squigs the other army would come up and just start throwing their squigs to <laughs> i have no problem with this <laughs> no that's canon and i'm so for it <laughs> 
Now I know what my next terrain project is going to be. <laughs> Squig landmines. We should make that a terrain feature. Yeah. No, I'm doing like a fortification. Board, right? I'm doing an right? orc board right now, yeah. so I can just add squig mines. I got a bunch of those Age of Sigmar squigs. <laughs> okay, you yeah, just yeah. bury them half in with just their eyes, just just like right there. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. You say if you, you have to if you move now. through this, yeah, you like can take a wound on like a six or whatever. Yeah, it's like a spore mine for Tyranids. Sure. Exactly. Damn it! Now I have to do this. <laughs> this Fuck. doesn't seem like a big problem to me. <laughs> it's not really my problem. So it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, only good things. Uh, let's talk about buzzer squigs. So these squigs actually have wings, but once again, you know the sa- they share the same shape. Lots of mouth. Always lots of mouth. And they have wings. And what Gretchen will do is they will have like some type of metal pot or something, something to hold them. And they'll basically go and try to capture these buzzer squigs and okay. put them in the pot. Then they put a lid on it. Then they shake it up like a hornet's nest. And they throw it at the enemy. The pot will break. What the fuck? The lid will fall open. The the buzzer squid will fly out and start trying to burrow itself in the enemy. Whatever's closest. So that's fun. So it's like, oh my god, I run out of boom squigs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me a buzzer squig. <laughs> well, different. Catch me a buzzer. Di- different uses. What is going on? <laughs> oh, oh man, squigs. <laughs> yeah, so they shake it up like a hornet's nest and throw it. And uh, I think they're a lot smaller too. Like I think you try to catch multiple ones of these. You know, so maybe like the size of birds or something. Yeah, I think like the snitch from Harry Potter. Sure. Yeah. 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 All of a sudden, you enough see a bunch to of like really get like a pot chick. It'd be funny to model, oh, man. like just a bunch of Gretchens holding pots above their heads or whatever. And your person's like, "What on earth?" And you're like, "Just you wait." <laughs> There's actually cherry bombs inside. <laughs> yeah. Squig models ruined, but <laughs> so is that ten-hour Black Templar. We're good. Oh, that's <laughs> sad. Next, we got instead of buzzer squig, we got buzzing squigs. These actually kind of just look like mayflies. Yeah, um, they fly around and they eat everything except for orcoid flesh, which they cannot absorb. Apparently, uh, they're soon all other creatures, however, are devoured by them. And yeah, they just fly around and try to eat things like yeah. super mosquitoes, mayflies, hornets, mayflies, mayflies. I don't know. Yeah, what that is. or locusts. Sure, they just I it, like locusts. They that, sound like something. A lot better. They sound like something that just goes in a swarm, like descends upon something. Yeah, strips it of its flesh. Yeah, and then it's just skeleton left. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then they just yeah. leave it. Yeah, exactly. And they, and they just make a buzzing sound. Yeah, when they fly. So yeah, it's like a big swarm of weird. Squig insect. And they're also kept in pots. Yeah. And fired from catapults. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> so weird. It's kind of weird that they have two versions of the same squig. They're S- almost the same. What, yeah. buzzing and buzzer? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare. The yeah. orc the orc is very varied. Okay? <laughs> and everything has a purpose <laughs> and a usefulness. <laughs> And it is only when everything comes together <laughs> that can the strength of the orc society be revealed as a whole. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay? Uh-huh. In diversity mm-hmm. is their strength. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Now that we got that settled. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Up next, we got eating squigs. I guess technically every squig is an eating squig if you can catch sure, it. Sure, of course. Yeah, but, but buzzing squigs would be pretty, you know, they're so small. Yeah, so they do make ones that are especially juicy or flavorful or... Do you think they have, like, gourmet squids? Yeah, yep. they'll let some just, like, eat, like, the best food. They're not eating refuge, you know, like, 100% organic squid. That's right, it's, this know? is, like, <laughs> fed on, like, the finest of orc fungi. Yeah, so, yeah, they have a bunch of different types of eating squigs, and basically this is what the whole orc population will eat. All orc hordes will eat this type of squig. Um, so you can cook them. Does anyone know what you the drops are? are? What the drops? No, because it said that the best squigs are found at the bottom of the drops, and they're called <laughs> juicy squigs. Let's just imagine the bottom it's of like, the pit. Yeah, uh, exactly. that's where they're all, yeah. or like the back of the cave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. like literally the worst place to go to for any uh, snotling. But like this is like the best squig of all of the squigs. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So that's kind of them. Like that, it's just their primary food source. There's a bunch of different types. Yeah. Uh, exploding squigs are up next, and uh, these ones possess multiple stomachs, each containing a thick broth of unstable digestive chemicals. 
So, <laughs> again, activated by shaking. <laughs> yeah, these ones are more intentional than the... Uh, it's like a, the it's, it's like an alchemical bomb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, or think like how... Um, uh, what are those glow tubes called? Glow sticks. Yeah, glow sticks. Well, how you have like snap something in the middle, yeah. it breaks it, and then the gases mix, and then it glows. Yeah. That's pretty much what these guys are. There's separate containers inside of them. You shake it, they mix, and then it's like you got a ticking time bomb in your yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, orcs will intentionally feed these ones like bits of metal and stuff so that when they do explode, that it it's will It's like shard, yeah. which leads me to believe they definitely would do that with other ones. The other ones, so like, it doesn't seem like you can approach them without them exploding. Oh, so like, yeah. the other that's ones, a good point. I, the other ones, I see them more, yeah, used for like, like they were saying, like minefields or like, you know, they just let them wander around the camp at night. They so that oh, if anyone comes in, they just explode. Like it's like a warning signal. Yeah, where these ones are more used as like active weapons. That's an interesting. I never even would have made that connection of yeah well, they, orc they society just, is very unique you know everything has a purpose wow I've mark been told. you fit right in with orc <laughs> society you have them really good ideas <laughs> but a great a good <laughs> it's a universal tie-in to the entire universe <laughs> so next one we'll talk about face eating squigs or nasher squigs <laughs> This uh, this breed is perhaps the most voracious and dangerous of all the varieties, which is crazy, so, considering some explode. Yeah, and like they have a, a gaping mouth, which is as big as its body is, yeah. and it's filled with needle-like teeth, and it is capable of swallowing a snotling hole. So, so this, pretty big. Its, like its it mouth go- is capable of opening up a foot and a half. <laughs> That's crazy. Holy crap. <laughs> nope. Just, bloop. Bloop. Uh, so orcs have made a tradition, though, of having squig-eating contests and uh, they like to use these squigs. And basically the challenge is to try to outbite the uh, the face-eating squig. So you put it on a table and you just try to chomp it before it can chomp you. Like an orc will do this. Yes, an orc so it, will. So you, you got to go capture one of these things. You put yeah. it on the table and you're just trying to show how big of, a, of an e-peen you have. Yeah. And you're just trying to open your mouth bigger than it can open its mouth <laughs> exactly i feel like you might hold it upside down though by the tail that you definitely would work, yeah. could yeah, yeah. You definitely otherwise could. it might just go for your neck yeah, or something. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> you have to have some controls yeah uh gretchen and grots and snotlings and stuff they'll place bets to see like uh if he can actually do it like it's this whole big like system it's a instead of i don't know that's just entertainment right yeah, exactly like, it's what else are they supposed to do in their bars yeah <laughs> Their version of dog fighting, I guess. Exactly, yeah, or cockfights. <laughs> the other use for these. <laughs> <Okay>. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the other use for these are as uh, pain boys will use them. Pain boys are like medics, doctors. Um, well, and- <laughs> medis- yeah, in air quotes. Yeah. Medi squigs, I love them. <laughs> Um, and they'll actually end up using these to amputate limbs. If uh, orcs that limbs one's got to go. Yeah, they'll <laughs> grab their face-eating squig. Get and, my face squig. <laughs> <laughs> although it's a very dangerous pro- process for the the Gretchens that help the <laughs> the doctor because you know it's a face-eater squig. It wants a, to bite everything. All it is is mouth. Yeah. Where do you grab it? It's all mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> probably tied to a string and just maybe yeah. <laughs> no they have like those like pole collars held by two <laughs> things just yeah, yeah. trying to like yeah uh so there's actually an imperial designation of this squig and it is called the orcus ravenati Ooh. The high gothic designation of this squig nice the ravenous yeah. orc nice that's right Up next, we got the Flesh Eater Squig. And uh, these squigs are used as like a sign of wealth for orc knobs and stuff. Uh, They have them. And the unique thing about these squigs is they will actually shed their teeth like orcs. And apparently the orcs actually find these teeth valuable enough to trade. So they drop their teeth and they'll regrow them. So it's money doesn't grow on trees but, but it, it does grow on squigs it grows yeah. on squigs apparently <laughs> in orc economy so yeah, yeah but they, you gotta be it's like a sign of wealth to have one of these in the first place yeah exactly i'm sure they're rare particularly dangerous like you, to get. you see like a hoity-toity orc 
knob walking around with like his yeah it's on a leash yeah. <laughs> walking like a chihuahua <laughs> right exactly yeah. and then there's like some grexes around he's like you leave my teeth alone <laughs> just has two squigs one is like a pocket squig just to hold all the right teeth, like, no exactly and then and then there's just a snotling there to like or a grot to just pick up all the teeth at the flesh eater <laughs> it's very delicate or society <laughs> it's many fine many layers <laughs> many I'm, many layers i'm just saying the fact that they have a knob having a couple of little walking balls beside him is just, <laughs> oh man well they don't have them on their persons apparently no they gotta have them attached to little strings attached to their person <laughs> they're little leashes that's why this isn't for kids <laughs> it's not conrad kurz it's the orcs that make it inappropriate <laughs> these these squigs are incredibly rare um it, it really is like a sign of wealth and prestige um you th- they have to be intentionally like cultivated as opposed to a lot of the other types of or uh just gonna pop orcoids up. yeah um yeah gob squig this breed is very small so it can be put into an orc's mouth and it is usually left there for several days and it cleans the orc's mouth by rooting around for them um because teeth is money to them so you got to keep your teeth clean and to not deteriorate and, and nobody uh, likes going to the orc dentist no <laughs> that is you're gonna leave with no teeth yeah but but these these ones look like just a pile a pile of like slime. slime yeah, yeah. <laughs> they it's almost just, it's like just uh, another orc fungus yeah. right like understand that squigs meet like there's no defining trait of a squig a squig yeah. is anything yeah but it looks like a sad ditto pokemon oh <laughs> yeah that's that is sad, yeah, it's sad ditto. No. <laughs> uh they're, they're sometimes also called chewing squigs because you know you put in your mouth you chew on it, it's bubble gum and it cleans your teeth yeah that's that's, that's fun back out? why not it's like chew really <laughs> <laughs> uh so a growler squig so these are kind of kept as like pets or mascots so it's it kind of think of like the Tasmanian devil is how I like picture this one looking. Okay. So it's like the size of a small dog, though it's really vicious. Um, and like they'll follow behind you, which is like apparently amusing to some <laughs> orcs. Um, as, like, and they can be like snapping at the ankles of other orcs and making them jump, I guess, which is funny. So they're pit bulls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's we it, all know pit bulls are lethal and, da- and dangerous. Well, absolutely, it's dangerous breed. Shouldn't be allowed to. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> euthanization. <laughs> uh, so it, it's they're usually owned by knobs or odd boys. It's another kind of mar- a status mark, yeah, type of thing. Not not your everyday boy as yeah. one of these guys. Talk Wh- about what, the mimics, though. Yeah, what's crazy? So they have one specific one called a mimic, and it it's almost like a parrot essentially, where it can mimic noises. So I want one. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> a so, parrot. <laughs> or a squig. A squig. <laughs> because if you, Let's not for be some silly. <laughs> reason, find in your possession a squig, I am going to shit myself. <laughs> ah. Because that means we live in 40k, <laughs> and, and we're all going to die. I'm about to die. Yeah, finally. <laughs> no, Mark. <laughs> there is no version this. of this where you end I've up I've studied my whole life for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Plot twist. He's the first ethereal. Oh, my <laughs> God. I would kill myself <laughs> i will just start injecting myself with chlorophyll and become the first orc I am this. i'll lose my i'll lose everything important to me down there <laughs> because you'll gain what's really important the respect <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey man that that bike trip this this whole trip here really got me fired up <laughs> now i know what the gretchen on the back of the bike feels like <laughs> holy crap yeah, that- gotta go fast <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Those uh, first thirty feet were like, <laughs> and my lunch is back there. <laughs> I noticed when we first started riding, there was a strong clench in the pelvic area, but you yep. loosened up eventually. <laughs> yeah, once we hit Stony, it was like, eh. I mean, they're gonna make it there alive, or it's not my problem anymore. So, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> at Let's some point, up. you gotta learn to let go. <laughs> 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 no, just no, no, not physically, <laughs> just, just emotionally. <laughs> so. These mimic squigs, um, they're the most foul-mouthed creatures probably in the whole galaxy. All they do is just yell insults at anyone That's who right. passes by. And you better believe that the orc who owns them is just, he only, te- he loves in- it. Instead of like with children, when you hit, say a bad word, you plug their ears, their ears are always plugged until the bad word is said, <laughs> then they unplug it. Yeah. And then- Earmuffs. Yeah. 
I really love you. All right, take them off. <laughs> Every time they swear, you just drop a treat in their mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If the space that's wolf, positive reinforcement. <laughs> just the yeah. foul mouth creatures. If a space wolf ever had a pet, it would be this thing. They would make an exception. They already say fuck the rules, anyways. They would keep pets. gross. So oh, yeah, space wolf. We're, we're we're on to one of the best squigs. Hairy squigs. Yep. A hairy squig. So. All, all that a hairy squig is is a small body and a head that consists of like a lot of little claws and teeth. teeth. Yep. So just tiny little ones though, and then just hair. <laughs> yeah. Just like a lot of hair, like two feet of hair with like more, <laughs> more hair with like give, a hockey give me puck more body. hair, <laughs> more hair, <laughs> and make it red. Or green. And yellow. And, yes. and green. I think that's a Looney Tunes character again. <laughs> it's in Bosco, my brain. It's Bosco. <laughs> but all these these orcs, they, like, they put them on their head, and the teeth and the claws, and they will like latch into the orc's head, and hey, bada bing, bada boom. You got yourself a nice hairdo. You got yourself a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> That is honestly that is one awesome. of the yeah. best uses of squigs. Yeah. Yeah, because their orcs are hairless, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well. Well, yeah, of yeah, course. Orc. Every orc, orc is hairless. hairless. Yeah. Unless they have a, a hair squig. squig. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm never using those little top knot orc heads on my models ever again. <laughs> Why? Come on. You don't like the squigs. It's purity of the race. So you ever, <laughs> do you ever They're all see the same race. Uh, orcs with um like beards? Uh, I've seen D and D orcs with beards. Okay, but not like forty k forty k or Sigmar. No. So if a forty k bork. Bork. If a bearded orc. orc ever did have a beard, yeah, that would be a squig. Yeah. Armpit hair, squig. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh my god. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> like it's a plot too. twist. I'm going to make all my orcs have hair now. <laughs> oh my god. That's all it is. We did. All right. Quick we little did. obligatory selfie. <laughs> um, Wait a minute. Do you think the Look, orcs would famous. call their squigs borks? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Maybe hair squigs. The borks. Yeah. Horks. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Those um, are the hair, the hair, hair one. They, they call them chin squigs. For um, <laughs> yeah, that's the beard one. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> but there's actually there's actually another purpose of an orc always having a, a squig or two or three attached to its body. And this was invented by Pain Boys. Ew. <laughs> Wait, are we thinking of the same purpose? I thought of lunch. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's lunch. It's yeah. a snack. Oh. It's brunch. Oh, yeah. that'd be the worst snack ever. It's just hair. Yeah. You ever yeah, get rolls. hair in your mouth? That's the last no, thing No, no, I no, no. You grab it by the hair. You it's all it. hair. <laughs> no, it has a little body. <laughs> it's like when you drop like an Oreo cookie underneath your your fridge. You and honestly you, think and you get it out. give a shit. And it's all well, hair. That's what they've got the slimy orcs, orcs for. Orcs do not <laughs> care. Oh. Okay, fine. Besides, all snack. the hair is fungus it's... anyway. <laughs> Breaks down. It's not like our hair. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. It's fungus hair. Okay, fine, fine. It's I'll a allow tree beard it. lichen. I'll allow yeah, it. Right? Just Bearded a little lichen. more wispy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't wag your head at me, <laughs> Skylar. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to wait for my video. <laughs> they, they'll also use this, the hair as like sewing material so they can sew clothes together. Um, clothes what about like cuts and stuff well so then they have one other crazy use and this is one the pain boys came up with oh, okay. where they take a hair squig and they put it on a wound and uh, they'll get it to bite it close and to seal it shut nice and it just you know eventually you're healed and you take the squig off and you, you put it back it on your head put oh. it on your head <laughs> or eat it it depends are you hungry or not yeah it's actually it's, a really good idea yeah yeah and uh it's kind of like a uh a mark of honor maybe not honor but it gives you like these little bite marks around your scar, so it kind of shows, like, yeah, what happened. It's like, oh my god, check you, out this you have battle a scar, scar, though. Anyway, no, but it's like, a bigger scar. There's more of a scar. Oh, now, I like, see. Because now you have like, the, like a bunch of like inflicting wounds. Yeah, like now you got like a scar, and then you got teeth around it. Yeah. You know? Oh my. So a snake bite loses an arm, and the pain boy takes like six of these things and just all around the arm. Just these, <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, he's walking around like a tribesman with a little hula thing on That's his arm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's just shaking and moving it's in the just wind. A tattoo. <laughs> and then, yeah, when they when all the squigs come off, it's just now like a scar tattoo of just these little circles all around the whole arm. <laughs> Gross. I mean, yeah. I dig Why it. not? Yeah, I would. I would just put them back on me somewhere else and be like, all right, I'm keeping these for later. These are valuable. 
Okay, let's talk about the herd squig. So these ones are bred because they have a good sense of smell and they're fast and they're intelligent and they're they gotta go fast and they got good endurance. And their purpose is they're used by runt herds, which are orcs that will bully around a bunch of Gretchen or Grotz. And uh, these herd squigs will they're they'll herd the grots with so it's like border collies exactly you need a bunch of grots to go that way you get a couple herd squigs to kind of just lead them in that direction one on either side and if one gets out of line they're snap at the grot it really shows you where grots and spots <laughs> yeah. in orc society yeah um yeah so they, that's kind it's of like it. a dog yeah and they can actually like respond to like whistles and calls like they they have intelligence to it they they know how to read a battlefield and lead the grots where they need to go Mm. They have like they're not intelligent, but well, they understand basic communication. Yeah, exactly. like I don't think a bag squig understands <laughs> no, no. communication. No, or the hair squig. It's actually the most sentient thing in the game. If it the could most talk, intelligent. Yeah, but no one ever lets it, it talk. They just shove yeah. things in its mouth. Yeah. It doesn't have arms or legs, so, so it can't, can't do anything. Can't move. Oh, oh no! God. It's such a bleak <laughs> existence for a bag squig. <laughs> The smartest thing in the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Could have solved all the problems. All right. Oh, man. Um, I like it. Herding squigs are also used to uh, track like, yes. lost pieces. It of helps equipment. with their smelling. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. yeah, they can track lost gear and stuff or track prey or whatever. Good. Oily squigs. Oily squigs, uh, they are what they sound like. They're greasy, dirty squigs that uh, can be used to choke the chicken and secrete oil <laughs> and use it for machine oil essentially but it, so if you look at the pictures of an oily squig yeah there's kind of like the the really old drawing kind of has like a really long snout yeah, like, like an these ones are made for it so. and yeah so it has like you squeeze that snout and like out of its snout will come the oil yeah <laughs> but also there's like uh other things about it it kind of just looks like a hose att is attached yeah, into to the somewhere. Mouth, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is the one with like the grot oiler that comes with the mech? Is that that? That's thing? the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah where it's yeah. got like a blow yeah. torch yeah. in its ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. my favorite. Yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> blow Model torch ones. in the ass. Uh, but yeah, it, it's like it's made for mechs to like lubricate and oil like the vehicles yeah. and everything that they do. So I dig <laughs> it. It's gross. It, the, the, the old drawing of it. It just looks so sad. <laughs> just this fat little body. <laughs> that you squeeze. Yeah. Oh. Poor little... Oh, no. It's so you just sad. Because <laughs> you know it's just like some mech's like, Give me that one! <laughs> it looks like a squeezed He's like, he looks, kiwi. <laughs> he looks to like the snot that took care of it. He's like, oh. <laughs> Daddy, no! no. Don't no. let them take me! <laughs> All right. The, uh, they like it, man. They're getting off every squeeze. No! <laughs> God all damn. orcs are done for a specific purpose. They all accept their fate and they like it. <laughs> paint uh, squigs. Let's paint go squigs. into that. Yes. So these, they're really small and they have a very bright variety of, of squigs. Um, and they excrete like a, a dye that's used by orcoids. And this is how orc or orcs actually get their different colors is they'll use oh. these paint squigs. Yeah, because no orc is naturally um, blue. Or red, right? They're all green. Mm -hmm. So, but they can change their color by using these squigs as paint. <laughs> Does that mean the purple ones are just really hard to find? Mm, exactly. Yeah. You've never seen one. <laughs> all my commandos are just actually just bases with a little purple drop on each of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parasite hunting squigs. So these are tiny but uh, voracious feeders. And they're used to like just clean up after the orcs essentially, and to keep them. They clean. really look like small insects. They got like six legs. Yeah, and uh, they they just hunt parasites on the orcs, like lice, ticks, leeches. I don't know why the orcs would care about this, but apparently you got to keep a clean machine, bro. You got to keep a clean machine. <laughs> so you just let a handful of these go, and then they clean up all the. Well, the thing is, the bugs. They're still orcs. I these guess little things. Right? I guess orcs only want orcs. Yeah. Yeah. So like they'll they'll eat like all the gross things. We don't want those bugs. We want these bugs. What do you think? Like like maybe like uh, they're in like a weird environment where there's like lots of poisonous bugs as mm -hmm. well that are around. So they'll just have a couple of these crawling on them all the time. Yeah. And then a poisonous bug lands. These guys will eat it instead of make letting it poison the orc or something. Sure, or, sure. I don't know. I guess like so orcs are fungus. So then 
things like locusts or something like that could be very bad for an orc population. It's true. They could just tear chunks off the orc. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's like you said, it's still a fungus. Yeah. You can, and it, could human But it orc? still has organs and it has muscle yes, and yes. fiber. It's not like a mushroom. It's not like how people traditionally no, but like, think no, it's, of it. It's an 80-20 a, split. Yeah. No, but like it has blood and it has veins yeah. and they have skin. Blood. It's not a well thought out. <laughs> no, no. There we go. It's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's a really cool, great idea. Terrible I, execution. I, I wish it would have just made like a fungus race that wasn't orcs in 40k and then just made normal mm. like mm. flesh and blood orcs with mm. their own ecosystem that yeah they could... if they gave them like another way to pro- proliferate yeah that was just as good as the way they currently exactly. had without it being fungus yeah i would i could i mean last that. time i checked orcs are like a mix of elf and human so why couldn't they be eldar <laughs> that's a different eldar and human right that's a different <laughs> hey for all we know the old ones did take eldar leftovers and they just kind of let them sit in a jar for 20 years. They fermented and out popped the first orc. <laughs> there you go. There's and the they're like, let's just roll with it. I let's think see actually, what happens. I think orcs are technically older than they the Eldar. Are. The Krork? Yeah. I heard they were Fuck. older. Like the Krork were the like Krork the last to be invented by the old ones before they lost to the Necron. And the I'm pretty sure they were, they were built before the Eldar. And they used them. Then they were just out of control. And they weren't doing what they needed to do. So they, then they created the Eldar. Yeah, but the Krork were highly intelligent comparatively. Define highly intelligent. Like, they're not passing. building <laughs> empires. <laughs> like, yeah, they're they not. were. They were because they were under the psychic influence of the old ones. They were incredibly. They were like sixteen meters tall. They were huge. That doesn't mean intelligence. That just means strength. They had highly adapted power armor that rivaled and surpassed space marines. Like they were really. Oh, good. I don't know where you're getting yeah. any of this Krork, information. Krork has never ever fought a space marine. No, but their power. How armor, did you know? How can you compare them? Uh. Fabius Bile book, they go into Trison's oh, okay. um, laboratory and they see it and they actually have a Krork. And oh, okay. Fabius even notes that the power armor of the Krork surpassed his in every way just by passing it. Just by looking at it, he could see it was better. Oh, Interesting. Man. I'll lend you cool. the book. It's actually Rip. really, really It would good. be cool to see that part. because It's really yeah. good. Most of the Krork stuff I have is like really old. Like the knowledge yeah. of it, because yeah. they don't really release that knowledge yeah. anymore well it's like so. it's slim and far between but sure. yeah you gotta pick it interesting you, very cool I, i'll lend you the books if you want that'd they're, be worth taking a look yeah at they're it, phenomenal yeah. and you get necron That's the <laughs> gotcha back spiky squigs these are uh squigs once again a ball but they have a bunch of spines protruding Think like in cloister the pokemon yeah <laughs> all of these can be related to some type of pokemon that's right <laughs> We're taking it to our next one, too. And this is oh, where I'm excited. <laughs> now I'm excited. It even has the naming know, convention of a Pokemon. Know, Squiggy know, on. And this is why uh, it's family friendly. We introduce Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, but on squ- Spiky Squigs, um, so they are safe, even though they're covered in spikes, except when shaken again <laughs> or Naturally. agitated. Uh, it shoots out the spines at any threatening creature like a porcupine. Yeah. So, and just like a, a porcupine, they have like a little poisonous or venomous type deal going on. Porcupines are um, not poisonous or venomous. They have like a neurotoxin. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. It's just really sharp barbs. No, they'll make you swell up. There is a neurotoxin. Maybe if you're a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and they can't shoot their quills. Yeah. They just they're... come off really easily. <laughs> Maybe some type. typing furiously. <laughs> The Scandinavian porcupine. Listen, <laughs> I saw Homeward Bound. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was bullshit. <laughs> and yeah, the dog should have died. <laughs> <laughs> Googling. Googling. I wouldn't be surprised if it would be easily uh, an easily infected wound. All right, that's what it is. Yeah. Just because they're probably shitting all over their spines and stuff. And you yeah. get, they're, <laughs> also, they're, sweat they're also and, very small at the tip and they'll break, break off. off. Very Monomolecular. Easily. <laughs> so they're not poisonous they're not venomous but you'll get infected you'll get infected yeah. but okay, the that's spiky fair. squigs are but they are yes the spiky Ooh, squigs are poisonous so they're better <laughs> <laughs> this is weird i want some of these yeah <laughs> yeah and you can just fucking throw them at people if you want it's like a sticky grenade yeah i was thinking that too excellent <laughs> just, my favorite shake it and throw it <laughs> uh but apparently the poison is like just it's not very effective on orc Flesh. Yeah. Makes sense. They just th- like it's it's made by an orc, so the orc have a natural protection Obviously. against it. Checks out. <laughs> Weird. So if I make a bullet and then 
shoot myself. Mm-hmm. Are you? <laughs> well, I have a natural is it protection made from out it? of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make a bullet of skin? Because then I would say yes, you're fine. The bullet of skin is not very effective. <laughs> what, what about a bullet of bone? Very effective. <laughs> well, it's probably gonna shat. Like, can you fire a bullet of bone without it I, I shattering? Bone arrowheads. That's yeah. Oh nice. yeah. There you go. But then, is the bow made by your bone and like your sinew? I don't know, man. These are questions for higher minds. <laughs> okay, we're not. Ta- these we're not are talking about weapons. Yeah, we're talking for older men with smaller muscles than me. <laughs> yeah. These are questions for the suits in Washington. That's right. That's a good one <laughs> to figure out. Uh, let's go to um, Skylar's favorite squig. No, it's not my favorite. This squig. is your favorite squig. <laughs> Tell us all about it. The people have spoken. The squiggy on. <laughs> uh-huh. I read it as the squidgen. The squidgen. Yeah. It looks like a pigeon. <laughs> it looks like a pigeon. And what's that? It's the Pokemon uh, doppelganger. Is it's P- 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 oh Pidgey on Pidgey yeah. or Pidgeon, yeah. yeah. So or whatever. No, that's what's the crazy? second evolution or whatever. That's Pidgeon. That's Pidgeon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pidgeon. So yeah. squiggy on. The crazy thing about this <laughs> is when you read this, when I see it, I'm like, this has got to be like some really old throwback. This was released in 2016. Oh, my <laughs> God. <Yes>. That's crazy. <laughs> Orcs. It's orc. Yeah. with the times, but they won't. <laughs> okay. So there they are birds. They honestly look like pigeons. <laughs> And they're used for just transferring messages. They're like they're messenger pigeons. Oh my god! Do they have feathers? Yeah. Well, honestly, it looks like feathers. Okay, I want to see. But look, look at it. Wouldn't surprise me if they were something else. They're squig hawks too. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> like, and they they don't have beaks, right? But and no. they do have really large oh mouths. Oh my god! But if you go on Lex Academy, you look at one of their pictures. It's literally carrying a satchel. Oh. Like how god. it's carrying messages. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. my, God. oh my God. That's It's pretty great. It was in a white dwarf in 2016. So that's... Perfect. So, yeah, they're just used to relay messages around, eh? <laughs> Perfect. Does it get paid in teeth? Uh-huh. Probably not. <laughs> Gets to eat the message once it's been delivered? Yeah. Because it's written on... A squig. Flesh. No, yeah, it's squig. A message squig. It's written on a, a paper squig. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, oh uh, but a thing about the the tragedy of the squidgen actually is that it's actually often preyed upon. No, by the squig hawk, no. <laughs> <laughs> which is the next squig. We'll talk Dear about. pray, tell me what a squig hawk is. <laughs> so apparently, this well. is a flying breed of uh, squig, big enough to eat a grown orc. My God. This they is ride a them? massive. And it I bet they looks, would. It looks more like a dragon, yeah, it, than it does like a squidgen. Because a squidgen is very bird. <laughs> a squidgen. A squidgen is very birdy, <laughs> and a, a squig hawk. It honestly just looks like a full Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> like, and apparently they're too wild to be tamed, just like Charizard. That's Charizard. right. Yeah. Well, you got to be like what level? You got to have the level eight gym in badge in order to tell Charizard what to do. <laughs> Right. Yes, he did. He upgraded Pokeball too. Don't mm-hmm. Yes, yes, naturally. <laughs> Come on, nobody's finding Charizards in the wild. You got to train your Charmander from that. Yeah. Occasionally, sure. though, Orc runt herds do use them. Sure, if they're lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet I, they use it just as like a creeper in the night, like. <laughs> Grotz, if you don't listen to me, the squig the hawk, squig will, hawk come. will come get you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh no. So weird. Squig pipe. <laughs> it's the all next right, one. All right. Have you ever seen a bagpipe? <laughs> yes. Yes, Eric. Oh, perfect. So you know what this squig <laughs> looks like. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming the function is similar? Some would say in the exact same. <laughs> so you blow into the mouth of That's the right. squig. So that is when living you blow into its mouth. They yes. are described <laughs> as having several tube-like probeskies. 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 That's yeah. how you would actually say it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it's a probiscus. Yeah, that's like the no- a nose. Yeah, it's the same thing. <clears throat> it's like one yeah. is this. Okay, sure. It's but so they have these long tubes <laughs> that are like flared outward at the end of it, coming like out horn. of its body, um, and it's. Pretty much just a 
bagpipe. You <laughs> blow in one end and it'll f- inflate its body and you squeeze it and it makes noise. Weird it's, and disturbing noises. Yeah. Yeah. Plot Instrument. twist, it's just him screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pain. <laughs> <laughs> why do I want to suffer? <laughs> What is my purpose? <laughs> it's an instrument of Eric's people. <laughs> oh, uh. Uh, so it apparently is a thousand times more cacophonous than any human mi- musical instrument, but orcs <laughs> really like its sound when they go into battle. <laughs> so I need to kit bash them. I these. honestly like the idea of it's just a screaming squig. <laughs> Like you're just filling its lungs and you're so- squeezing the air out of it. Oh, it's so lovely. I really soothe my ears when I'm going to wah. Oh, ah, maybe squeak. that's where they got the sound of wah. Just wah! <laughs> it also says that uh, this squig will make weird and disturbing sounds through its other pipes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then you I hit like the it. right note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Oh boy. Okay, this next one I'm really thinking almost takes the cake for the best. Okay, <laughs> right. read it to us. <laughs> squig sharks. <laughs> and they... They kind of almost in this in these pictures I'm looking at they kind of look like just dead sharks like they're <laughs> they look like they're porous and they have like just spin like fins and spines everywhere along their body yeah lots of just like spikes yeah and like the the face beside it just looks like a decaying shark it's like, like megalodon yeah like it's Ugh. a weird one like why would this be a thing that i know happens? i so, thought that too when i read it i was like what the f- so why it's from the novel deaf squadron which okay. is a, which is a graphic novel Ooh. um and it was created it was first published in 2004 yeah and it's about it's a, old but about okay orc air a- attack unit it's, ah, I flying don't. space squig like, sharks. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that, that doesn't connects. Make sense. <laughs> What's the connection? <laughs> squig sharknado. <laughs> yeah, sharknado, really. Yeah. Squignado. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, it's just sharks. That's, sure. It's a squig shark. I, I like this one. Swab squigs. <laughs> Think of those like cotton swabs. That's a squig. And uh, orcs will use it to clean up because apparently that's something they do. And then they just throw away. Throw away the little swab squig, and then it'll run away, probably clean itself. Reusable. It's perfect. No longer do you have to spend $100 of dollars a week on cotton no, swabs. No, I, like like, I, I like to think that um, like Gretchen's will use these as like cloths for their tables, too. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Like they're cleaning their cups with these things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Definitely. Right? Like, <laughs> definitely. But even though they're all cotton and fur and hair, they still have a, a, a mouth, of course, and they can bite you pretty good. Whoa. So. Would you even be a squig if you didn't have a mouth? And, <laughs> and many little teeth. Maybe that's the physical <laughs> mouth. trait. Yeah. Everyone has to have a mouth. Yeah. And it, it's all about body to mouth ratio. ratio. Yeah. 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 So that's why, you know, grotlings and stuff are not. They don't have a big one. Yeah. They, the, the ratio is not right. Yeah. So that's why they're not squigs. <laughs> so all of orc society is basically the Flintstones. Just using other organic life Yabba forms. Yabba dabba do, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 syringe squig and these actually have a use um, which is nice to t- see tell me the use um damn okay well th- there's a couple uses of this so the first one is obviously you can use them as a weapon because they have a very very long needle-like nose that you could literally just stab into your enemy and then squeeze out the inside fluids into them boom poison done boom just like that yeah. Or commandos love them. That's right. Fascinating. Um, but pain boys will actually use these into their um, patient's flesh. And like, what would they insert, I wonder? It's like a, an anesthetic. So it, it's the same poison all the way around. It's yeah. always the same poison, but it just doesn't affect orcs the yeah. same way. So like to what will knock a human out immediately, yeah. it just numbs the orc's arm. Yeah. So then they can, you know cut it off and attach a metal rod i guess even though orcs are like super tough like 
why not? I think the whole point is their own stuff can't hurt them or it affects them totally different. Yeah. So. No, he's saying, like, why would you yeah. need to do yeah, that? Yeah, like, anymore? orcs are, like, super, yeah. like, tough oh, and hardy. Like, why yeah. would they care? Like, you yeah, think the pain boy really weird. cares yeah. about his patient's pain level? They're going to put the freaking biter squig on it. Or exactly. Bite his arm <laughs> exactly. Off. Like, you ever been, like, having to, like, like, imagine you, ha- you were a doctor and you were in, like, you know the medical office and you had to do an amputation yes, on like I a amputate. 250 pound biker yeah. would you rather have him knock the fuck out oh, okay. that's so a this, good point yeah, okay. that is a good so it's for the safety of the pain boy yeah okay. and he doesn't kill his medical and his medical gretchen like those guys are valuable <laughs> that's hours and hours of but, them watching and learning so basically if they're bigger and they can hold down their patient and just chop it off they will they're gonna <laughs> know it. Yeah. yeah yeah i like it's it not, if they need to they'll just yeah, you'll knock them out okay. all the more time to make new accessories exactly. you just get to do more with less resistance so should we say myth busted then or- <laughs> <laughs> yes myth busted Wait to can you just get the cap <laughs> uh, let's talk about targeting squids <laughs> these guys look hilarious um, these ones actually have the proportion of eye to mouth ratio just right. Thirty three percent body, thirty three percent mouth, thirty three percent eye, and one percent tech leg. <laughs> I so that's the thing. So what they're used for is targeting squigs. So somehow they they just sit on the orc's shoulder and enhance the orc's targeting. So I what I like to think is that they'll just like whisper into the orc's ear. Like, hey, look to the left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's some enemies over there to oh, the left. Oh, look behind you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I like to think it is. Shoot better next it's, time. If you if you look at the models, a <laughs> lot like of like a caddy, he's just whispering. <laughs> <laughs> go with the five. Yeah. Yeah. Like, go with the big shooter on this one. <laughs> Let little more well, power. Like, watch. If you look cry. at them, they've got some wires in the back of their head. Yes, and it, they, they do might even that. be wired into the orc. Yeah, oh, yeah, into they, the orc or to the gun. Yeah, I feel like if you it wired it into the orc, then the orc would be able to have a better like. Sure, oh, they, they can like eye. see through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who knows? It might be telescopic or something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. I dig it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty cool. I want one. It's that I definitely see this as a later generation squig in the orc y- yeah. releases. Mm. Yeah. You know, it has like real value. <laughs> well, when did and Flash it, Gits come out? And they've been around for a squidging. long time, but <laughs> squidging. <laughs> you know? Those are useful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> when you can create craft capable of traveling the galaxy, you need squidging to deliver messages. <laughs> They, can, they have radio. <laughs> they need them. <laughs> All right. Well, so we, we always got to keep in mind, too, that, like, orcs, some stay at, like, a feral level. I know. Okay. I know. Okay, Eric. Just, God just damn it, Mark. Fuck. I know. We always got to remember that this is perfectly thought out. <laughs> we always got to remember that. Yeah. Uh, vampire so squigs. Vampire squigs is a uh, flying variety of squig featuring leathery wings, sharp little fangs, and the the appetite, appetite for blood. For blood. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just skip past this one because that's just like why well because the oh. pain boys use them to bleed their victims i mean patients from <laughs> of blood a bad blood causing from septic wounds yeah okay. there's an infection it's like sure. a leech sure except they drain blood not flesh <laughs> and they don't they don't care where the blood comes from <laughs> as long as they get it. <laughs> it's a weird one. It is a weird one. I wonder when this one was released. <laughs> this is just something Corn whipped up in his little alley when he got uh, um, Tuska and all his orcs in there. He's like, huh, what can wow. I do with this? This is, the first, this is from the first edition. Yeah, yeah. That is is 1991 oh, shit. <laughs> that that was released so that means nothing then pretty, pretty much, much. <laughs> yeah uh so let's talk about the next one this is, this is actually one of the last ones on our list and a very mm-hmm. cool one too yes um where word 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 weird? squigs word yeah weird it's basically wired weird. Hmm. Yeah. oh it's the weirding way uh yeah. it it, oh, it basically looks like a brain with a mouth well, of course, if it didn't have a mouth, it wouldn't be a squig. Exactly. And, and the ratio. Always of remember course, the mouth ratio. Uh, but yeah, it's basically densely packed neural lobes, which the orcs can actually throw and use as like a psionic bomb. Yeah, so it just releases like a, a brainwave killing blast upon its own death. Yeah. 
which is interesting. It's, it's very different. I wonder normally, if it's a, normally yeah. the orc is all about physical. Yeah. So releasing one of these is. I wonder, if, different. like it, psionic. What does that mean? Does that have anything to do with like psychers? No, no, which are psychic. So it's yeah, it could. No, yeah. psionic is oh. about sound, isn't it? No, no, it's definitely psychic. It's psychic. Yeah. psychic. yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. It's, but it's like a practical use of psychic powers. Hmm. hmm. So like you can have like psychic ability and like read auras or whatever if you're into that shit <laughs> says but the guy the- wearing a big charm necklace of crystals around him <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> it was a gift it was from a- your shaman <laughs> psionics is like affecting other people physically oh, okay. with your psychic powers <laughs> oh, okay like telekinesis that yep. is psychic but it's just a different branch of psychic so psionics is just yeah cool huh I mean, that's, that, that seems pretty plausible. I mean, the wah energy can affect, sure like, weird boys and everything. Yeah. I think that's who uses them, too, is weird boys. Yeah, it would make it sense. Would, yeah, it would be weird for anyone else to, like, claim knowledge of them, right? But they're also apparently also, also, they're really also, also really rare. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> Good. Good to know. <laughs> You're welcome. These things look, oh, they look pretty gross. Yeah, oh. a brain with a mouth. It would be cool to see someone model just a bunch of different squigs. Yeah. I yeah. have been thinking that okay. this entire episode. <laughs> Get on it. I'm just going to invest in the stock of green stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, invest in green stuff because <laughs> you're about I'm going to have to buy <laughs> so goddamn much. Uh, but but it, it's on. I got it. So yeah, this kind this. of like ends the the squigs. The commonly known ones. Yeah, and this is the problem <laughs> with squigs is that we've – we got to talk reiterated we're going to we're going to <laughs> yes. there's one more we're going to go into but it kind of just doesn't fit with the rest of these but the thing about squigs is it's really anything that isn't an orc a grot or a snot but it's still an orcoid but it's still an orcoid yeah and that's kind of the, de- the defining thing about squigs and this is an interesting thing about squig on uh, the orcs really if you wanted to write a story and you're writing a story about orc culture you could think of any creature you want the yeah. crazier some super unique function yeah, to like it. the crazier it is <laughs> the better it, as long as it's not like a, a military orc because then everyone would have one of those but if you think of this one squig it's like it's pipes like they have sewage now because of a squig who literally <laughs> no. just like like it sits it's a bucket and you just shit in it and it goes out <laughs> they don't it, have buttholes Eric. Eric. <laughs> it's for the yeah okay i don't know why i'm stuck on that <laughs> <laughs> but all I'm saying is you could think of anything you want almost and instead of it being mechanical or something like a creation that the orcs made, they grew it. I patch squig. squig. An eye patch squig. Oh, Why not? It. Just sits there. Yeah. <laughs> it. It's a new type of micro squig that actually replaces your eye for better oh, shooting. It Nano in. squigs. Yeah, it, oh. it, it like you, it eats your eye because they have mouths, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And it just, or else it's not a squig. And then it just burrows in with its tendrils and like latches and it into links the, onto like the yeah. Nano yeah. Nano <laughs> That'd be cool. Like Why not? Squig. That's yeah, your targeting yeah. squig, yeah. right? That's just a different That's, kind. Yeah. That's right? brilliant. Like now an orc has Give, night vision or whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. But it's an obscenely big eye compared to its other one. It's like twice the size but, three yeah. times the size yeah. but something like that I think if you include details like that in an orc story you Perfect. give it so much flavor yeah as opposed to just like I'm orc I'm ung- angry and hungry and give me crumpins and gubbins <laughs> exactly you know I think you can really like the thing about orcs is you can be so much more creative and so much more crazy with them than you can with almost any other army which is any other faction yeah. which is nice yeah um so Anything you want, you can make a squig. But that being said, there is one more squig that we missed. Um, and they're called squig offs. And uh, I think they don't technically classify them as squigs because the mouth to body ratio isn't there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, it's kind of in the name. Yeah. Squig off. Yeah. Yeah. And. Lexicanum also does say it is the largest of squigs. Yeah. And, I, like, we kind of been joking about that mouth to size ratio. And the reality is, if it's not an orc, a grot, or a Gretchen, or a snotling, you're a squig. It's a squig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catch yeah. all. So these things are absolutely massive. Yeah. And there's different types, too. Some are not 
huge. Like some are still, some would be elephant size where others would be, um, let's say a blue whale size. Right. Yeah. Like think as big as you think you think it is and then think way beyond the thinking of (laughs) that. Yeah. And the thing about them too is there's no set set size. Like there's different types, there's different categories. So you have big squigs, you have gargantuan squigs, you know, you have uh, orcasauruses apparently is a thing (laughs) that's right fucking awesome (laughs) that's so metal (laughs) but uh they they kind of typically end up looking they have four legs they're a big beast yeah big beast they they're almost like an elephant because they got tusks coming out Mm -hmm. not really but think of more of like a face almost i was thinking more like a rhino yeah Yeah, definitely a rhino yeah that'd be better yeah rhino with tusks yeah, I and felt a way like a bigger lower Star jaw. Wars, like Wait. that you know episode two of Star Wars, where yes. they're in the Attack arena. Of the clones, where they in the arena? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A reek. Okay, okay. it's called a reek. Yeah, okay. That's what I imagine a squig off looks that like. That is a very but green good. and brown. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. A good one. Yeah, same kind of temperament, even too. Yeah. <laughs> Damn go. it, Lucasfilm stole something else. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what is a breath? But uh, the orcs will breed them, and they just use them for war. So they they arm them with armor. Oh, they put a but you put massive cannons on. Oh them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, its back will have just a massive earth shaker cannon on them, or it'll have a bunch of orc boys riding on top of it. Yeah, like how the, they have the Oliphants in Lord of the Rings, which yeah. is just towers yeah. with people hanging on them. Yeah, like Squigos will do that too, and they'll just stomp around. And they're particularly like violent and aggressive too like they're they're made to go to war these ones yeah um, <laughs> super lavas they'll the interesting thing is that they'll actually like they travel in packs Oof. so that's crazy and that's just like a big i think gargantuans are a little different because they're just too big to <laughs> sustain more than one of them <laughs> but like uh, apparently the size of squig ox are determined by the formula feed that it's given so high quality formulas will keep the squig off growing and growing and growing mm-hmm. but lesser you can tested. stunt its growth you can yeah if you don't give it the right well feed. yeah like you you might want to make one that's specifically like your war boss's mount yeah i know it still needs to be large because you're a large orc right but you don't need it to be 80 feet large big enough yeah. to put a fortress on right yeah. exactly yeah and this is like one of the more cool squigs i guess yeah they got some cool models for sure yeah they're just they're massive beasts with lots of armor plating on lots of guns big guns yeah it's like their version of like a big tank right yeah i've heard they can rival a small titan yes sir like a a warhound yeah that'd be pretty cool that's a pretty big uh animal i don't think you're getting that thing off planet yeah no (laughs) space space, hulks are pretty big man how do you make a space hulk on a planet or they have teleporters. <laughs> I yeah. guess you know what you're on the risk, but you, sometimes you gotta risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> what demon's gonna fuck with a gargantuan squig off? Have you ever met Corn? <laughs> Personally, no. I feel like he would really like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um. So, anything else we want to add to our grot snot and squig episode? Um, the only other thing that uh, we'll mention here is just fungus in general. They, they do make fungus that isn't living as some types of food. Like, they actually do have just straight up fungus fungus. Oh, yeah. People, they eat it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <clears throat> primarily, like... And there, snots there's will the farm eat, it. Yeah. Primarily, the eating squat is the main food source. But there's all types of... Some will be like uh, glow in the dark fungus that they use for lights. Like there'll be all types of different bioluminescence. Fun- exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's their really version all. of flashlights. That's right. I like. But it. Uh, like those well, ones, probably a squig for that too. <laughs> yeah. Where they just shake it and it starts glowing. A chemical reaction. Is, exactly. Yeah, glows. But yeah, that's that's kind of all. Like there, there's all types of funguses. There's definitely all types of squigs. And uh, yeah, that's a good time. That is a good time. Okay, I would like to know. I would like you to think of a unique squig that you think is worth growing, and you can't use anything that's been said before. So, Mark, you're not allowed to use the eye patch one. Okay. God damn it! God damn oh, it! I can't use the tracker squig. Okay. For the- so, I, um, <laughs> I, I would like to. You, so, okay. So, you know how like orcs a lot of the times lose a limb. I was going with this too. A bone squig. Yeah. <laughs> where it's a prosthetic. Yes, but it's a squig. <laughs> yeah. And so like you'll grab, so your arm gets chopped off. 
So then you get a squig. I like to th- see it more as a leg. Because you a usually leg? want like the arm like to be practical. I know, but there's a reason. Okay, okay. Because its mouth is your hand. <laughs> it's got a mouth on both ends. <laughs> one, okay, Eric. One mouth That's a gr- good mouth ratio. To your arm, yeah. and then the other mouth is on the other end. So it, just, <laughs> it eats whatever you grab. Holy shit. So that's a squig that I think would be pretty cool. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, what do you got, Skylar? Hearing a squig. <laughs> yes. To give you super hearing. Yeah, exactly. So it just like eats or, your ears. <laughs> or from all the the uh, loud noises from all their artillery, uh-huh. maybe you can't hear orders anymore, so you need a squig. You shove them in <laughs> okay. your ear hole, and he amplifies all the cool. sound right Is into it's, your... It's not necessarily like a battle squig. It's just a squig that yep. they've needed once and they grew it. <laughs> exactly. All right. Toddler. It's not entirely super practical for warfare, but Who cares? I, I was thinking like a couple of squigs with like maybe just obscenely huge legs and they strap them to like a huge bar and some orc just gets a chariot of squigs pulling them. <laughs> <laughs> if it blows up, well, there's a bunch of squigs. Like they're just running into the battlefield and just eating everything. So it's multi-purpose. So they're, they're like a- attack squigs, but their legs, like they're just a little bigger and capable yeah. of... Like and they're not bred for yeah like they're attacking ha- they're bred for dre- like pulling a chair yeah they've got like big avian like almost like ostrich legs that are just ripped you know yeah and their their heads are a little smaller but their legs are just obscene but still big and mouths yeah and they just have like <laughs> literally they're attached to the chariot because someone just picked them up and stuck them on a spike <laughs> took that that spikes attached to a bar and there's like six of these guys. <laughs> And, like, some poor little Gretchen's just dangling a bit of food in front of them. <laughs> and they're just all attached to this, like, snake bite chariot on a war boss. And he's just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> all right. All right gets yep. shot. They're all released. And now they're just into the fray. That's so right. I, I Doing think, what squigs do best. <laughs> biting and chomping. That's right. I got one. Okay. Sleeping bag squig. <laughs> yes! You go inside of it. <laughs> it's just a mouth, it's a, it's a mouth and squig. It's like, it's it's like a bag it. squig, but yeah. bigger. Yeah, exactly. And But it's warm as well. It's warm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, like, Snotlings and uh, Gretchen, right? They're not, like, these big, hardy orcs. Oh, so they're they small, need some, weak little yeah, things. Yeah, they need something to keep them warm at night. So the sleeping bag squig is oh the perfect God. solution. <laughs> is it furry on it the would, inside? It's either that or, like, wet. <laughs> oh, so you know, well, like... Well, Warm, it's like warm a sack of like flesh yeah. that you go <laughs> but, uh, inside. What's really useful too about it? Okay. It has a built-in alarm clock because if you stay in it too long, You'll start it digests you. Yeah. <laughs> so you you got to get your six hours of sleep and you got to go it. on your way. Anymore, you'll start losing toes. <laughs> exactly. Does it roll up and get tied to your back. <laughs> Bunch of commandos have these. Honestly, that squeaks. would be that's, that's pretty awesome. awesome. That's I, I awesome. dig it. That's I dig a good it. one, Mark. Uh, there is one thing we I don't think we've either haven't covered yet or we forgot to. Okay, what's that? Um, on the notes of like Gretchens and Snotlings, it's minuscule in comparison to orcs, but they are still all having some influence of psychic power. Yeah, they all they contribute they all, to the war. Yeah, they do, but it's like we're talking <laughs> pennies know, on the dollar. It's so pathetic how yeah. I said that. The yeah. war. The wa. Whoa. I'm just going to say wog. I don't care. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, fuck it's, totally. it's, it's like if you compared it an orc contributes a loony and like sure. a, a, a Gretchen contributes a nickel An or Eldar a penny. soul yeah. to a Tau soul. So yeah. here, here was it, a, like, it's not very much, but if you get a thousand Gretchen, they it can will still equi- create a wall. It will, it will accumulate to about the same as like four or five orcs. Like stuff will still happen the way like an orc ability does with like a gun that's full of bolts and yeah. no springs, but it'll still shoot. If you get enough Gretchen there, it will happen. But the, like you need thousands of Gretchen in order to even they just they have it there. I think they're a little more grounded in reality though. And yeah, I think that's practical. probably yeah. like, like yeah. their like low our intelligence. Reality, yeah. Yes, and their cunning gives them a different perspective than the orc. Yeah. And I think the orcs like idiocy allows them to believe in things that are clearly not real. Or is it the other way around? Yes. Is it because they can influence it that they don't need intelligence? Well, that's a chicken and egg scenario, right? Like, what came first? But the fact is that <laughs> Grotz and Gretchen's, like, yes, I, I agree with you. They don't do as much, but I wonder if it would be because they don't need that weird faith. Yeah. Right? Like, they are they know how money works. They know how trading and bartering works. Yeah, they yeah. know that if they look at this orc too long, they're going to get their, <laughs> yeah. They're going to die. Or did they develop the low cunning because they didn't have as much access to the wall? It could be whatever you want your story to be. 
well, I'm un- unimaginative as fuck, so I am <laughs> shit out of luck. But it is it is worth noting, I think, do that they still yeah. contribute. Do you think that there's such thing as a weird grot? A grot with actual lightning bolt psychic powers? I have come up with a story for a weird grot, and okay. he's called the Tooth Fairy. Oh, God. <laughs> he was an orc. He was a little grot that decided he wanted to get rich, so he was strangely psychically powerful. And I've, I've got a model for him at home. He's just standing on stacks of teeth. But <laughs> he found out that human kids lose their, humans lose their teeth as well. So he got stranded on a human planet and used his psychic ability to come up with the myth of the tooth fairy. <laughs> and because orcs don't give a crap about gold, he just had a bunch of it from his old boss. So he just leaves gold under the pillows of every kid and has a bunch of teeth. <laughs> Joke's on him. They're human They're, human, they're worth nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're worth... <laughs> diddly dick but he's got a mountain of teeth that's pretty good yeah and he's got wings and everything and he's got like a like i got like a psychers wand from a chaos marine yeah and just glued it on there and it's all green is there a tooth on it i should put a tooth on it. <laughs> yeah but he's the tooth fairy yeah tooth a tooth sorry yeah tooth, tooth. tooth fairy <laughs> it's uh, awesome now obviously that's like uh that's fanfic sure Completely. but do you think in the lore there could ever be like a real Weird grot. Seems like if they already have the weird... Um, weird boys. Yeah. No, the the psychic bomb one. Yeah. Psionic. Psionic, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. If Why they already not? have one of those... Then... Games Workshop can buy my idea for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say sure. Seems like it works its way through the entire ecosystem. So, mm. some, yeah, eventually... Yeah, like, maybe that grot ate a bunch of psionic... Something squigs, yeah, ate a and bunch now, of orc brains. Something, yeah, it dined on weird. I think flesh. you could definitely come up with a way of having one. Eric's given that skeptical look. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, like orcs, grots and Gretch, grots, it's not, gr- gr- not grots, <laughs> grots, it's not snots. grots and Gretchens. They, they occupy a very low rung. Yeah, they are not. They don't participate in glorious battles. They don't want. Um, to enter combat. Yeah, they don't want to like prove that they're powerful or anything. I like. I have no problem with having a grot who has like uncontrollable wog energy bursts. Yeah, because that's what weird boys are. They channel the wog. They energy. channel it. Yeah, which but I think it's a little different. I think theirs is much more targeted. But they're also like steeped in the tradition of a weird boy. Yeah, and I think to have a grot. To ever ascend to that similar level, I don't think I ever see that happening. But I think it would be hilarious mm. for for Wog Energy to be constantly spilling from this one grot, and he has no idea what the fuck's <laughs> happening. And oh no, just poor happen, guy! Things just happen oh, around no. him all the time. Or kicks him, orc explodes. Right, exactly. No. Like, why did the orc just explode? <laughs> now he's got to run away and hide because, <laughs> yeah. right, like, I, sure. I would much more enjoy that story in an orc than I would a grot rising up to the upper echelon. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, and absolutely, yeah. Killing space marines with lightning. Yeah, I, like, yeah. If, I if I wanted think... to read a story of a powerful grot, I'd read the story of Grotticus. I don't think grots could actually be that powerful. Like, their bodies are pretty frail. And to yeah, be able to have of course. The, the amount of wah energy you would need would to, kill, like, to kill yeah, a space yeah, marine, yeah, he course. would explode before he even got the chance yeah, to focus. Sure. So I don't think I don't think it'll ever reach the same level yes, as, no, yes. as a... Impossible. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Myth busted. <laughs> <laughs> That's no <nulled> up. <laughs> um, what about... Um, are we talking about Gorkamorka at all? Uh, nope, we'll save that for another time. Awesome. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of information on Gork Morka, so we we won't touch any of that. We need too. Colin here for that. <laughs> Colin? Specifically him. Well yeah. He's mechanicus. excitable. He's oh there's, is there? there? There's mechanicus okay. involvement in there and they actually start worshipping the orcs. Oh okay. it's really cool. Hmm. Nice. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Highly recommend ten out of ten. <laughs> uh, but is there anything else about this? Do you guys? want to read this email? Oh, this guy, he had a lot of questions. A lot of questions and a lot of questions about the warp. And it was just like, my God, I cannot formulate how to talk about the warp All right, in so an email. It's nothing about orcs. No. All right. Yeah, I know this. All right. So let's let's go over this guy's questions, actually. I think it can be fun. Sure. It's not going to be, but I think it could be. All right. So uh, we had a question from David. And he said, Hi, Eric, Mark, and Jordan. I enjoy listening to your podcasts. I liked your first 10 or so episodes where you're giving an overview of the history of the 40K Galaxy. 
there were some things I didn't know about, like the Thunder Warriors and the Men of Iron. Cool. Keep up the good work. Blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, in the most recent Chaos Demons Codex, it talks about the story of Tusca Demon Killer. I guess it is about orcs. How he leads a war, a war into the Eye <laughs> of Terror, and then is eventually defeated on a corn demon world. And then Corn is so happy with him that he basically resurrects him each day so he can refight the battle. However, in the most recent Codex, continues the story a bit further, and it says that Korn brought Tusca back to his bronze fortress, and then, I suppose, he allowed Tusca to die in battle, but then spores are released from Tusca and his orcs that grow into more orcs, then these newly birthed orcs fight the battles with Korn troops each day, instead of Tusca being resurrected anymore. The thing I don't understand, how can orc spores grow outside the bronze fortress? Is it a real place that mortals can exist, or can only demons exist there? That's the first part of his question. So I guess the first comment I have is about the change to the story. I definitely preferred it when it was Resurrection. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's the only story I've ever heard. Yeah, I haven't heard I, the new and one I haven't either, read the new. But... I haven't read the new Codex because yeah. we haven't really done like a super mm-hmm. deep dive to like specific chaos stuff yet. Yeah. Yet? It's happening? Oh, eventually. Uh, sweet. So I haven't, I haven't like really do- dove into the, into the Codex yet. So I'm yeah. missing that. Um, but the, I guess the problem he's having with is like spatial yeah, identity in understanding like... Understanding the warp is the hardest part in 40k. First of all, David, we don't claim to understand the warp because then <laughs> we can't. die. You cannot. Yeah. To but, claim to understand the warp just proves you do not. So <laughs> the chaos gods can exert their power over a realm of the warp and create reality. Exactly. They can exercise and create a bubble of reality around themselves and then they can place in it whatever they want yeah that's where nurgle has his garden yeah is in his own bubble of reality zinch has his maze mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. there's like the seven layers or whatever to his maze corn has his bronze palace yeah fortress. corn has his bronze fortress with his um skull throne and yeah. his like rivers of blood that yeah. flow through it so there and really there's no limit to any of these a because like there's no, they aren't really explored yet. There's a couple stories where people go into them, but there's not yeah. a lot. Yeah. But the other is like, what's the limit of a chaos god's power? Is there one? The breadth of their imagination Ex- at that exact moment. Yeah, sure. And and that, if that's what you define as like the limit of their power, then there's no limit to the amount of reality that they can create within the immaterium. Yeah. I'd like to amend that. The relative amount of it would be relative to their imagination, but also the power they have at that moment. Yeah, if they can think about it, but they can't generate it because do they don't have the power. How you measure the amount of power that corn or Nurgle Oh, you have. couldn't. The There's constant of, death. Yeah, but, but if it was a, bodies and war, there is. Yeah. And you can't really measure it. No, you can't. But all, all that's I'm how saying, There's no it. scale. All yeah. I'm saying is that um, their realm, their reality, exists outside the single building that they have. Corn yeah. has his bronze fortress. But you better believe that he has thousands and millions of miles the of red killing wastes. fields yeah. Yeah. outside his house where he just sends demons to fight yeah. and kill and bleed for him. Yeah. Right? And, and combat and honor <laughs> and what? Um, they have parts of the Eye of Terror, and I think they go over it in the Ultramarine books, where they actually have corn demons that breed cultists with each other to make more <laughs> oh, sacrifice. Of course. But oh, it's messed This is up. a little yeah. different, though. Because you're in the Eye of Terror, mm-hmm. it's a mixing of reality, the Immaterium, and the Immaterium. Yeah, yeah. but and so Korn those are real, just as much though. But those are real places already mm-hmm. that have been infected with chaos. But this is pure warp that is turned and twisted mm-hmm. into anything he wants. Yeah, oh yeah, so it's a little different. Yeah, I mean, he still but, can exert a relatively similar amount yes, of power over of there. Course. Like he can just make a planet in the Eye of Terror if he wants, but there would still have to be some rules of reality there. Whereas in the warp, there aren't any. Yeah. The entire planet could be inside out. Whereas you can't quite do that in the eye of terror. Yeah. So they're definitely, they can definitely grow. If the story is that they're now growing orc spores, they definitely could. He could just create an area where they grow them. Exactly. There's not a problem with that at all. Chaos snotlings just mining. (laughs) Yeah. Warp. Orcs. And anything can exist in the warp. So that yeah, was like another one there's of his a questions. story of Kaldor Drago. He's a gray knight where he's been sucked into the warp and he just battles he's, demons he's for all eternity. He's been there for hundreds of years yeah. at this point. And he just battles demons wandering yeah. the warp. He's even gone to some of these places. Like he's he's been to Nurgle's it. Garden. Yeah. He went to Zinch's Maze. Yeah. He's um, 40K's Doom guy. 
<laughs> he really is. Like, but the, another, the other thing is that it's not just gray knights that can exist in there. Anyone, Anyone can exist. Yeah. It's, it's how powerful, how powerful is your mind? Yeah. Cause like, so ships, they fly through the warp. And if your Gellerfield fails, you are now in the warp. So you can chances exist are, in there. You can exist in there. Chances are you're going to get fucked up by demons. Or or not even just demons. Even warp just energies. warp energies yeah. or warp beings that just f- constantly roam yeah. the warp looking yeah, for things exactly. to eat. So it's definitely a place that you can go to. It's just the, the yeah. laws of our reality don't affect that. Yeah, the same exactly. Thing. You might be in the warp and travel. Like You might take one step. And then exit the warp, and you've traveled half the galaxy. Exactly. That might happen. Or you take a step, and you've taken a real step in real life. Yep. Yeah. You never know, mm-hmm. like, by yourself. There are ways you can try and measure it and, like, map the energies of the warp. And This is why I didn't want to put this in an email. It's so it, – it's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but physical objects can exist in the warp yes. if they are put into the warp because that's how we get space hulks. Yeah, yeah of course. It's just – they're not really ships when they come out. So something else he asked is, is the Bronze Fortress an actual place that a mortal could go to if they flew on a spaceship into the Eye of Terror or the Cicatrix Maledictum? Sure, but like, where is it? How do you find it? Like, It's, it's, it's probably never it going to be in the you. same place twice. Exactly. No. It, Corn well, could just deny you access because I feel it's like his he reality. See it if he wanted you exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. his reality. Yeah. yeah. Right now, most of the time, he probably doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you're going there. Right. You're gonna die. But if so. he's like, wait a second, Kaldor is on his way here. Maybe, Maybe. not this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like so. Yeah. You, the the re, the possibility is there, but it <laughs> is not likely. Um, the same question. So he's gonna apply that to Nurgle's garden, the maze, Slanesh's pleasure pits, whatever they're called. I don't pleasure know. pits. I don't know what they're called. Pleasure holes. My vacation yeah. home. Are they a real places that a mortal could get to, or are they only accessible by demons? We just gave the example of Caldor Drago, how he actually goes to those. Yeah. So you can definitely go yeah. there. It's is the god going to allow you? Yeah. Uh, okay. And I uh, also just ha- one other example. Sorry. Sure. Um, Isha. Yes. Who's stuck mm-hmm. in Nurgle's garden? Exactly. Uh, it's an Eldar god. Yes, um, and she's she's crying constantly. Yeah. So uh, it just shows she's the goddess of life, and Nurgle is constantly poisoning her to yeah. see how effective his yeah. poison. So just are. like another mm-hmm. example of like something actually from the physical universe being in one of these realms. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a realm is a good way to put it. Yeah, and like Typhus went up to Nurgle's throne and actually dipped his blade in the cauldron. Yeah, yeah. so like, and he's a flesh and blood space marine. Yeah, yeah. not really. Well, he's not a flesh. demon. No, no. He, and he wasn't demonically possessed either. No. Yeah. He didn't need to. He didn't want to. Yeah. So, but like, yes, yeah. it's just another example yeah. of a real being accessing one of mm-hmm. these realms. Um, I also have another question. In the description of Korn's bro- bronze fortress, it talks about the moat being made up of blood or the souls of soldiers that have died in battle. Does this mean that the Chaos God's domains are actually kind of like the afterlife of the 40K universe? Well, for the Chaos worshipping models anyway... I'm going to say no. Yeah, that's a fun one. Because, like, I think, like, your your life essence will go there, but it's not, like, a... I don't see it as, like, a... We'll say, like, a Christianity point of view where it's, like, a heaven and a hell. And if you've been good, then you go to heaven. And it's this place... W- it's more just when you die, your energy is then sent there and it's fed upon and then, poof, it's gone. It's not like you are there and you're living for all eternity in this moat getting tormented i don't see it like that okay eldar souls yeah when they enter the warp they are specifically targeted and consumed by zinch and that would be the word consumed Slanesh. consumed S- sorry you're a correct slanash zinch um i'm sure he would too though yeah <laughs> given the choice but let's say that slanash did not want to consume the soul yeah and instead wanted to trap it possible Sure, sure. Absolutely. But what about the champions of a god? Or what about yes. those that he, so, he felt gave him blood and honor? They or also bound those, themselves to him, though. But those or those he hated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is stopping him from corn from plucking those souls out of the warp and then placing them in his moat? Sure, absolutely. It's possible. I just don't think it's. I don't think a common place. I don't think there's a specific destination your soul exactly. is supposed to go to, and it's like Ex- the River Styx where you're taken to a specific exactly. Place. Like I don't see it like that. It's more of an intentional thing where you know they might put you in that river. Like corn might capture your soul, put in that river, but you will Souls be are also consumed. Used as currency. 
Yeah. Right? And so, it will be spent and used up, and then yeah. it will be gone. It's not an eternal afterlife. And that's not true. Yeah. Afterlife, the afterlife is eternal. Your, your, immortal, your soul is immortal. That's one of the reasons why the Eldar are so terrified of Slanesh, is because it is a final death for them. Because it consumes them? Yeah. Yeah, it, it snuffs out their soul. That's the same reason that the shamans initially, back in way back Mesopotamia, created the emperor, because they, sh the shamans of humans were resurrecting themselves. Yes. But they found out that as they died, their souls were getting eaten by the primordial enemy. So they sacrificed themselves, bound their souls together and made the emperor. Yeah. And so that's it, the they, thing. They though, recognized, I think, they recognized yeah, the but it's idea all, yeah. that they're sl like, things are going to feed and take away from yeah. what they were. So that's the thing though. I think for 99% of the people, boom, you are devoured. You're gone. You're consumed. Yeah. That's that for you. Only the exceptionally powerful... Consumed by beings in the warp? Yeah, or by I, energies in the warp. I also yeah. think that your soul contributes to the energy of the warp. Yeah, it, yeah. it does. Okay. Yeah. The other yeah. point is, it also depends on how powerful of a psyker you are if your soul, bare and naked in the warp, can sustain itself. Exactly. That's a good point. So yeah. like, and then for that, we're talking what? Like zero, 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 zero. We're talking like percent? Magnus level. You know, like... Yeah, for for or the like most things, when you die, your soul gets consumed by the warp. It's not this eternal afterlife. It can yeah. be. Yeah, you don't have a consciousness exactly yeah. within the warp. You don't understand. Like an Eldar definitely understands because yeah. they can talk to them. Yeah, right? yeah. Like they, they they're can conscious enter. level ten though. Like yes. on their psychic abilities, where it's so, a human is a drop in the in the, in the ocean. Exactly. They experience the warp as a human soul, and they just go insane and dissipate. If I, I think if I had to give it a description, if I had like gun to my head. If I had to, I'm going to say that Corn has reserved that as like a punishment mm -hmm. and for he, cowards and yes, stuff. He like, is he specifically finding souls that yeah. he dislikes and so, saving them from being absorbed into the immaterium yeah. for <laughs> eternal saving. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Saving is so that like there's a, a specific demon that Corn makes called flesh hounds, and they specifically will go after people who have run away during combat. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, those souls, like. The flesh hounds capture those souls, then put them into the the river. Absolutely, like, yeah. yeah, I could see that like, happen. Z z souls that Zinch hates, he will gather and place in his maze to be tormented for all yeah. eternity by constantly wandering around. Yeah, Nurgle's garden, you slowly just rotting and feeling those sensations again. Right, like yeah. there's, I th I think for the most part, the immaterium is wild and changing, and you don't survive mm -hmm. it. Sure. You just join the mass of energy. Yeah. But I do think that what a god chooses to do is in their power. Sure. Yeah. I have one more reference just to kind of reinforce that. If you read the book Wrath of Karn, it's a short story, but it's Karn fighting Selenashi followers. And they the the Cornish berserkers get seduced by Selenash and they turn on Karn and of course he kills them. But the one thing he notes is that at everyone he kills, he just thinks that's another one that will stand before the throne of corn and have to answer for their betrayal and failure. But those are, again, yeah. space marines. Those are not humans. And sure. space marines are still, to some degree, psychic. There could be some level of mysticism in that, though, to where yeah. he believes that's what happens, well, and it doesn't necessarily mean it does. Well, and he's gone before, corn before, and received his blessing like that means he's either had corn had to come to the eye of terror or karn had to go to the warp like yes. he has stood before corn himself I just, so he would have seen i that. just don't know if corn is saying like every single space marine is worthy of his time no but the ones that betrayed him and turned to slanesh were it's okay because sure. they and were that's like punishment. a big deal right yeah. to him right sure yeah i can definitely see that yeah and again it's specific cases because again space marines make up 0.001% of the human population and then the chaos space marines are 001 of that so again it's again it's a very specific very tiny little module of it all but yeah. it's not but over unheard. the course of 60 million years actually no none of them have been alive that long what am I thinking of nothing yeah anyways but over <laughs> the course over someone the course edited of, crickets in that spot <laughs> yeah, over the course of the time that the gods have existed and been mm. gaining power and influence Who's to say that they haven't just been gathering souls to themselves? Sure. So Yeah. Hmm. And again, if souls are currency, you would want shinier, more powerful psyker souls to just... They might be reserved points of power you could break open and use them like battery packs. Yeah, yeah, when you needed it. Yeah. A nice yeah. little Or snack. you give them to a demon that you want to accomplish a task, so you give him special ammo. 
Sure. A little snack. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Uh, I think that's that was all he had that's in his it. email. Yeah. Um, it was a lot. Yeah. So send us an email if it's worth. We'll read it out. But uh, it has to be pretty, pretty good email. Well, we haven't had a good warp talk in a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Since episode one, really. We no. never really talked <laughs> about warp. We've had a lot beyond that. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you for listening, guys. Obviously, if you want to get in touch with us, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, send us an email. Check us out on Patreon. We got merchandise on the Red Bubble. On the Red Bubble. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll uh, see you all next episode. We did it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Do you want to hear that orc joke? Yes! Oh my God, <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay. How many squigs does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh. How many? <laughs> we don't know. The, the mech's still trying to screw the first one in. <laughs> <laughs> light bulb squig. Yeah, there we go. Oh my God, a light bulb squig. <laughs> a light bulb squig. Perfect. <laughs>